What up, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of Off the Menu Podcast. This is episode 113, and I'm Moose. I'm with my brothers, my co hosts, Pretty Prizzy, <laughs> Tiny Tay. What? What up? And today we have a very, very special guest. We have a very special guest named Chef Tony. He is a private chef, a culinary instructor, a go getter, big stepper, going crazy. <laughs> Not to forget, in the back, we have technical support, Sifu Ying. Dude, you gotta. What the hell? <laughs> what was that? Oh well, it's because the guns are that way and then the chairs are this way, dude. So they're on two separate <laughs> panels of the freaking board. Oh my god, bro. This is uh, crazy. Okay, well. Almost made me do this one again. <laughs> oh, jeez. Cricket. That would have been terrible for the opening. I honestly don't like how this is really set up. I should really change this. We've been meaning to that for well, a like, while. Why are the guns on the opposite side of of the cheers? I don't know. <laughs> We're but then the music is in the middle. The, the, so you got to go left and right. You got to go left twice. Music should be the front. Yeah. Okay. But it's in the middle. The so page. like you go now I have well, to go, three, do I have to go four page. pages back to get to the guns. There's so many you stuff. can do it on the same page. You can. But we have to go readjust it. It's All of them? It's a bitch. Well, we shouldn't have a favorites page instead. Of what ones we use, so well, yeah. I should go in there and do that. For context, the <coughs> roadcaster amazing, but we didn't set it up right. <laughs> <laughs> no free ads, bro. One hundred no, no free ads. <laughs> You're right. We're one hundred thirteen <laughs> episodes in, and we still have this problem. It's not a problem. <laughs> it's the foundation that we're built on. <laughs> oh my god. Which is improvisation. Well, honestly, it's we have been going a little faster with the intro. So, like doing, her, like getting hers in here. Yeah, it's like oh fuck, because Moose is like straightforward. Right yeah, very straightforward. It helps me get through it. Yeah, with many flaws, <laughs> but it works out. It's funny because you you forget to go get a big stepper part, so you have to look down at your phone. <laughs> uh, the notes Dude. keep me. It, they keep me going. If we're like a boy <laughs> band, they would have to have a freaking transcript for me. Because really? I would forget the lyrics all the time. And like the dance moves and the... No, the dance moves I got, choreography okay. I got. Okay, but it's the, the lyrics. The lyrics. Like, I, w- I would be able to sing your lyrics, but I wouldn't be able to remember my own. That's okay. so strange. I know. I can't. I can't. I don't know. If you were in a boy band and one boy band only, which boy band would it have been? Really? <laughs> oh. Is it really? Damn. <laughs> one? Yes. Like American and Korean? Anyone? Whatever. Yeah, any boy band, band, dude. Oh, dude. Unless you want to be in a girl group, I don't care. <laughs> hey. <laughs> they tried that one time. It didn't work out. <laughs> the, the co-ed thing didn't work out. Uh, if I, if, let, let's say for the sake of the argument, we, we, I'm, in a, I'm in a boy band, right? Uh, fuck. Throw me in one direction, dude. Wow. Mm. Throw me in one direction. I was, I was like, <clears throat> yeah, bro, that'd be pretty fucking crazy. Oh, my God. That's money for life. I'm set. Even when they break up, I can do whatever I want. Yeah. And plus, Harry Styles is fucking sexy. So. <laughs> That's the you reason. You just want to be by him. Yeah. You have to re- <laughs> you're replacing him, though. Oh. No, dude. Yeah. We're, you have to have, like, the top three. It's, like, Zayn, me, and Harry. He <laughs> <laughs> said me. <laughs> With okay. those guys. Okay. I love Nile, Nile, too. This is the Okay, yeah. And Liam, right? Liam. Liam is my least favorite. Louis like, second to last, but because <laughs> by really default, because all the other ones are great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. surprised you know all of them. So here's the thing. Okay. Like, <laughs> if it's sexy men, he knows them. <laughs> I, do, I do. But here's the thing. I used to hate on them. And right. then, my, and then my, my niece listened to them religiously. And it just kind of got stuck in our heads and we just ended up becoming fans. So I've been a fan since 2000, like, when did they come out? 11. Really? No. Yeah, 2011. Yeah, really? Yeah, 2011. Because summer of 2012, What Makes You Beautiful, was all over the radio. Yeah. So it had to be 2011 I? because I was 11. too young for kisses. 14. 14? <laughs> yeah, it was junior high. It was for sure junior high for me. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. uh, it was uh, it was just the time, man. And plus, I didn't like their first album. I thought that was trash. I still think it is. Everything else after that, fucking great. Favorite, <laughs> favorite song. Favorite song? To Diana, probably, from mm-hmm. One Direction. Yeah. Okay. That one goes hard. Okay. Makes you want to clap like a white girl, dude. Fucking sick. <laughs> That wasn't even foul, man. What do you mean? Come on. I, I just, just laughed. Dude, if you grow up in Utah, you know exactly what that dude, shit looks like. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm just laughing because I thought it was funny, you guys dude. You're funny. Like I, wasn't even mad. Oh, I, was I thought it was funny. I was, I was passionate. 
Okay. I wasn't even mad. I'm not even upset. All right, all right, all right. It's not about me. uh, Before we started, I said, why are you yelling at me? He said, I'm not even yelling. But that's... (laughs) <laughs> you guys got me hot and bothered, bro. Oh, talk oh, about- dude, I'm just laughing because I thought it was funny because that's like your depiction of like how white girls clap. No, yeah, that, yeah, that's funny. I don't know. Don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are gonna give me in trouble again. <laughs> Ooh, how? It's the mo's all over but now. Again. Now he thinks he thinks we're clickbaiting him all the time, right? <laughs> that's farming, why. If that's what we need to do, mm. and that's what we're gonna. Do. No, we're not doing that though. <laughs> right now, <laughs> that was that was genuine me laughing about how you perceive how I white girls I forget the clap. memo about the shirts as well. Yeah, dude, <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> no Spider Man meme today. Is honestly. <laughs> By fate, yeah, yeah, yeah. We just wore it, wore it on the same day. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, but we'll go ahead and get into the episode um, <laughs> for our guest here, um, Tony. Who are you, and what do you do? What's up, guys? My name is Tony Wynn. I'm a private chef, culinary instructor here in Utah. So I've been in this industry for about five years now, coming strong, you know. But I took the generic path, you know, going down into college straight out of high school mm-hmm. and COVID came along. And so I just decided to change my career path. I did it just out of like inst- instinct, but literally I fell in love with it. I fell in love with the cooking, the atmosphere and just the environment of everything about it. So you were in school and not anything culinary? Nope. Okay, shit. What were you doing before culinary? I was actually going into the medical field. As wow. As cliche as it sounds. Close <laughs> enough. They cut. <laughs> Work the same hours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, that's true. <laughs> that's crazy. There's crazy. Still, you have to have the same type of. Okay, I'm not going to compare it. You, <laughs> doctors, you guys do amazing jobs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't have the brains for those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can cut a piece of meat. You, you know, so I was gonna say something terrible. <laughs> oh, I was like, would you cut? So you, you were going into the medical field before, and then COVID comes around, and is that when you changed, right? Yeah. And why, why culinary? Out of everything that you could have done, you know, I'm not gonna lie. When I was growing up, I grew up around some bad food mm. from my mom. Oh, really? Oh my yeah. God. And so. Ow. Don't watch. Hey, <laughs> hey, I call my mom out every weekend. I call her out every weekend. Like my everyone would be at the house and they're like, how come you don't let your mom cook? Because I say, get out of the kitchen. My mom and didn't my learn mom. how to cook until late, later in life. Yeah, until we moved back to Utah. Oh, okay. Same way. And so like my mom didn't have any traditional like uh, dishes that she would cook growing up. It was always around the people that were around us that were older. Yeah. And then so when they asked, like, how come you don't really eat your mom's cooking? Because, well, she makes a lot of shellfish. And then that's all she really... Her XO, really good. Like that that dish she makes. But other mean, than like that... like XO sauce? Yeah. So she oh, makes okay, this XO okay, yeah. shellfish and yeah. it's like with chili oil. Yeah. It's pretty good. Okay. But okay. I only eat the sausage and the corn. <sighs> she going to make me hungry. <laughs> This episode's gonna make us hungry. It really is. Yeah. So you said your mom was late to cooking. Is that why it's bad? She was. She was like. <laughs> she was. I feel like it was in, until like I just had enough of it. <laughs> you know, like I was like, she's like, it's really good this time. I said, mm, it's not. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. But didn't you say like your mom makes good like pho? She does, that's and that's only when I feel like like coming into my teen years. Is when I really started appreciating like her food, and like that's when I really like appreciated food because I started hanging around like my sister and all that kind of thing, and she actually introduced me into like my favorite cuisine, which is Italian. Ooh. I become a fat bitch on Italian, <laughs> dude. I promise you, it is a problem. What is your favorite Italian dish? My favorite Italian dish would have to be a risotto. Mm. A risotto. I've only had like legit risotto like three times. Okay, <laughs> that's that's quite a few. I know, but I don't think I've <laughs> ever had it. I might, have, I might have had it once, but yeah, I can't recall. <clears throat> it's, it's definitely something um, that you don't break into when you first get introduced to Italian food. Of course, you start with the the fettuccine alfredo, the mm-hmm. spaghetti, the lasagnas, right? Everything yeah. that Olive Garden has. And then when you start getting to like... <laughs> <laughs> well, as an Asian... No free sponsors as, here, a, as an Asian family... <laughs> And when you want Italian food growing up, that's where you would go. Mine right? was the frozen section. Mm. My mom would yeah, like, yeah, the TV dinners. Yeah, that dude, sucks. The TV Some dinners. Banquets. No, yeah. I was like, I was a little fiend for those shits. I don't know I what it them was. Too. Yeah, dude. My, my siblings would give me shit because they're like, my, my brother made up this fucking lie. He's like, mom, 
Mua likes the TV dinners more than your fried rice. Bro. Oh, she no. held that over oh. me for years. He made that <laughs> <No>. shit up. <laughs> he made that shit up. He wasn't lying. No, I... Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> There's no way. I'm just hey, kidding. Hey, I'm just kidding. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> don't gaslight me. Your mom would be sick. That'd be so funny. <laughs> and I was like, dude, no, it's not it's not true. She's like, I'm never fucking cooking for you ever again. I was like, okay. That makes sense. That's when you were at your lightest. What do you mean? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh my god. No, I'm just going back on the banquets thing. <laughs> I got so fat off that shit. Oh, and then yeah. I switched to lean cuisine. Y'all know what that is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that shit didn't help. Knock either. off. Yeah. Knock yeah, it's off. the same shit. Because you get shit. the same yes. microwavable foods. Just I tell you know, everyone the best fried chicken out there is the banquet fried chicken. You're crazy. No, you have oh. you throw that. I shit. still eat them shits. You throw that shit in the microwave for six minutes because people don't cook it long enough, so it's not as crispy. But six minutes, perfect time. It comes out fully crispy. That I'm gonna call you on that one. No, I don't no, believe no. you, but I will, I'll try it. Yeah, I don't believe you, but I'll try it. Well, it's like Jollibee's and then that for me. <laughs> That's the, how I. That's for how the best I, chicken. Yeah, you make you make good chicken. I hate what I cook. Oh my god, it's yeah. not valid. We know this. It's not. It's not valid. I want Korean fried chicken. Mm. Honestly, Korean fried chicken's up yeah. there too. Yeah, that sounds so good. Chick Queen sounds so good right now. Chick Queen. Uh, so tell me a better one, man. I don't know any uh, other. You, you, not you, here. You know, it's, well, damn. Not here. Sorry. What about Ke- Kevin's chicken? What is it, Kevin's chicken? <laughs> That's not Korean fried chicken, but oh, okay, never mind. Their I'm chicken thinking. tenders is, is what you would go for. It's that spot I was talking about that people keep telling me to gatekeep, but it's on <laughs> forty. It's on forty seventh by their I fifteen. It's in the Chevron. Oh, the one, yeah, you told me. Okay, yeah. okay. What the hell? Isn't that Crunches? No. So it, it okay. It is. No, it's what is the other one? It's and it's another one Oof. down down like in Provo or something. Is that a gas station as well? But it is a chain, but this one's ran by a Vietnamese family, old Vietnamese. Oh, okay. And so mm-hmm. for some reason, it tastes different than how it's made everywhere else. So I would go there. Yeah. In Provo? No, no, here. Oh, okay, The ones okay. in Provo, like, taste like regular chicken. But chicken. for some reason, this there's, yeah, there's, I, I go in there to old Vietnamese. And like, I've been going there for about 15 years. And they've been running the same shop. And they make like this mean ass like chicken sandwich, but it's literally just tenders. <laughs> and then they order the bread and then you just put it together. And I'm like, okay. Sometimes that's nice. Yeah, it's nice. And then just going back to, you said your sister introduced you to her, your favorite cuisine. Does your yep. sister cook too? My sister does cook. She cooks a lot of, she grew up around like a lot of Lao and Thai people. Mm. And so that's like a lot of what she cooked. But just randomly Respect. on one night, she just cooked some jarred pasta sauce with some penne and like spicy Italian sausage. Mm-hmm. And, like, at that time, I, like, <laughs> fell in love with that shit. I was like, damn, I've never had this flavor in my life. <laughs> no, it's it's true, though, because when you grow up you're Asian, you don't have a lot of, like, you have stuff late. Right. Like, I had grilled cheese. Like I was like, I was like eight years old. Bro, brought up a grilled that's cheese. not that late. No, my no, that's that, not. It's not, not, not that late. late. But for a kid to have a grilled cheese at eight years old, I was like, it blew my mind. It changed my whole world. I was making those, like, every day. Okay. You know that, what I'm saying? I, that's honestly like a weird perspective to me <laughs> because I've always been cooking. And so like yeah. if I wanted to make something, I would make it. Like if I wanted pasta, I would make pasta. If no, I wanted I, like grilled cheese, I would make a grilled cheese. I didn't start cooking until I was like 12. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't start cooking until I would have burned the fucking years. house down. I started at six years old. <laughs> you had to though. You're like, yeah. But that's why. So like to me, when I when we're talking about this topic of like getting to food late, I'm like, mm-hmm. That's crazy because I was eating like I was making uh can like bottled or can uh fettuccine alfredo with chicken grilled chicken mm. at like eight years old, and making my own like garlic bread. It's fucking boss, dude! It's fucking mic drop, dude. <laughs> yeah, you're better than me. <laughs> no, okay. you're better than me. You went through the schooling All that right. that was able to take you to the, the career path that you're in now. Like you put mm-hmm. us side to side as night and day, you know, and people could probably you know taste the difference between you and I. Right. It's a real grind. Were you like, a, <clears throat> so were you experienced with cooking even before culinary school or you just went in? I went in blind. Damn, dude. Yeah, so <clears throat> I honestly didn't start cooking until probably 16, like for real. Oh, damn. Like, you know, you have like your jarred pasta sauces and whatever. But mm-hmm. I started like off small with like just like homemade meatballs, that kind of thing. But Growing up in that Asian household, you know, you have your parents or whatever that just always cook for you all the mm-hmm. time. And then you go to family gatherings, yeah. you have just spreads of food. So I never really got the chance to step in the kitchen. Yeah. But when I finally decided to do it, you know, 
I just fell in love with it. And before I went to culinary school, we kind of just threw down on like this kind of food challenge thing. We got like a few of the homies together and we just saw who could like cook better, basically. And we did, we had like judges and everything just to see. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's fucking tight. Yeah. It's like so, an episode of Chopped. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's tight. Food Wars, if you guys know yeah, what that food is. Food Wars, yeah. 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 If life was Food Wars, it'd be kind of crazy. No, is it the one where like they're like ah. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> the food? yeah, yeah, yeah okay, it's okay. like that's the only reaction yeah. I want with my edgy. food that's edgy. the only reaction like <laughs> just oh. <laughs> it's crazy it's like yeah they just had six <laughs> orgasms eating at one bite <laughs> crazy dude I'm trying to go into the next scene now <laughs> well you're uh, like you're a uh, kapiak I remember a kapiak cow too not even like the noodle one uh, yeah I fucking ate that shit and I had one of those like you just go and I'm like fuck <laughs> 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 she, she's good <laughs> he, he didn't even tell me he went and smoked after and he said hey that shit's good better than, better than no, my mom's no, <laughs> no I fucking put my hand on and I was like that's the fucking best shit I ever had the, I just looked at him like fuck? what the hell is he doing <laughs> cause he I know internally he hates complimenting me <laughs> it hurts him it hurts well, him no, to do it's that like, it's like it, with the food in particular it's saying it is the best cause I don't throw that out willy nilly Especially when you have heavy hitters like my mom, my aunts, and even I'm like, I feel a fairly good cook too. But when I have his, I'm like, fucking bitch. Again? (laughs) It happened like three or four times. It's like another one, another dish? (laughs) (gasps) But the the funny thing is too, when when I'm making those things, I don't feel like I'm making it the best. I'm always like learning how to make it better and better. And I Mm -hmm. think that's the one thing like when the difference between generations and like Asian cooking is that they know how to make it their way and they're only going to make it their way for the rest of their life. Right. Mm, And it's good. It's great. That's why we go to, we love home cooked meals. Right. Mm -hmm. But younger Asians, as we're starting to learn that this is going to die out if we don't take over. Right. And so you had, I had to take that upon myself to like, fuck dude, my grandpa's gone. How am I going to replicate his food? Mm-hmm. So I learned. I was like, I from all the years of just watching him, I learned how to make the food. I didn't even know how to make a lot guy ever. And I mm-hmm. made the one time I made it was like, oh shit, it tastes just like grandpa's. Yeah. And then the first time I made Kapia Kao, tastes just like grandpa's. Just mm-hmm. from analyzing and watching throughout the years. Mm. And so that's yeah. something I want to like, I don't want it to die out because this is food that, that has always brought us together. Right. So when I oh, want to yeah. make it for the family, that's something that entails life for me is like, this is what life is. No, yeah, it's beautiful. Especially with me. I barely even know how to cook any life. I don't, bro. Don't even ask yeah. me. But that's don't, what I'm saying, though. Don't like, even ask me, dude. <laughs> you, it, it, it's, dude, and like my grandma, she's getting old. She's starting yeah. to forget stuff. And when mm. she when she's cooking now, she's starting to burn things because she's leaving the stove and stuff on. So yeah, she was probably one of my favorite cooks growing up. Yeah. Right, all the stuff she made, I was like, "Oh, damn, that's grandma's food." Uh-huh. And now that she's getting older, and this is happening, you're like, "Damn, who's gonna make this stuff now?" Like, yeah. yeah, and then you, and then it hurts yeah. to know that mm. because that's how you can tell they're starting to get really old. Uh-huh. Is that the one thing they were really good at? Yeah, they're starting to lose that. <laughs> My grandma, before she passed, she just wanted to make uh, like she was, you know, go up. So frog, mm. yeah. She was really? just making frog stew. Mm. <laughs> For some reason, it was the shit to her. She was just like, "I just want some frog." I was like, "Okay, <laughs> okay grandma, it's all good." <laughs> okay, and then you'd have like, we'd have like literally frogs in the sink in the morning, just thawing out. She was crazy, but she always enjoyed like the stuff that we made. I would make her a literal like French toast, and she was like, "Oh my god, it's so good!" I was like, "You're gassing me up, grandma. Stop it, dude. You're crazy." <laughs> But yeah, she was just like it flipped with, for a weird reason. Like yeah, she just def- she definitely did to your point. But then she just started enjoying like simple, simple food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you know, as they get older, that's yeah. what happens. That's how my mom is too. Mm-hmm. She's yeah, she'll cook it for us, but she doesn't like. She can't eat spicy or like too mm. sweet or too. Yeah, it has to be like regular. Yeah. It's all mom, Lao moms, dude. Yeah. She can't so eat her own food. Sometimes. When you so when you got into col- so you went to culinary school. Yeah. Did you do the Park City one or which one did you do? No, I did it's Salt Lake Culinary Education. Okay. Yeah. Stay down here. Yep. Yeah. So when you when you chose to go on that career path, then how was that for your family? You know, 
He yeah, was like switching out for medical. Mm-hmm. Switching yeah. out oh. for medical. I'm not gonna lie. I lied straight up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he said, I, He's one of us. He's one of us. Straight up. Like, you know, COVID's around. I just don't want to do online school. Yeah. And so I lied straight up. I knew I wasn't gonna go back mm. from, <laughs> the, from the jump, but I didn't think I would find myself in this industry like now. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But my mom was actually really supportive from, I don't know, like when I first started cooking, she just saw like I loved what it like brought, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And so she's like, you wasted all this money on college already. <laughs> <laughs> and now you want to fucking change your career. And so she just like kind of wished that like I did it from the jump. Mm. Uh, yeah. I was throwing that's, it back, man. That's good, though, that, you know, that's a different take of the other side of Asian families, you know, because, like, right. when you, if you were to go up to any just Asian parent, they're going to be like, what the, what is wrong with you, mm-hmm. right? And that's because more so that the parents are going to be judged by their friends or family yeah. and be like, oh, you kids. let him do that, right? Yeah. So it's cool to hear that your mom did support it because that's it's really cool. That's definitely a different, yeah take on a career path that most Asians don't really do until like they figure out later in life, like I really love cooking, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. you know? And that's, and that's for me as well. Like that's the one thing I want to do at the end of my life is like when I'm like 50 years old, I want to just open a restaurant 10 seats and just sit there. Yeah. See and people enjoy your food. Yeah. And that's it. Have some TV on. Beautiful <laughs> football. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just me yelling at the TV. I'm not even cooking. Yeah. Yelling at the TV, <laughs> talking to all the customers. Just, <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. That's funny. And that's like a scary jump too. Were you like, did you, were you like freaking out when you just like decided like, I'm going to do something different from what they thought I was doing? You know, I like kind of was like of my dad. Because <clears throat> my dad was There's like. always one. Yeah. He was like yeah. less supportive of, of it. But like the group I was around, like my homies, my cousins, like just like my family in general, like they've been supporting me from the jump from it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and so. There's always going to be like just someone who like doubts you a little bit here yeah. and there, but yeah, you know, it's the you have to show it for them right. to believe it, right? Because like that's yeah. the same thing with us. Same thing with our you know parents. when starting a clothing brand, our parents didn't think that this is something that it obviously hasn't taken off yet because we're doing the podcast, but <laughs> doing it's a great something. Time. But it's also like people. <laughs> my mom now she she loves what we do. Mm-hmm. Like ten years ago, when I told her that this was something I wanted to do, she was like, "I don't think I think you should just go work a nine to five. And then do it on the side. But I was like, no, I think I need to focus on this. And then, yeah. you know, COVID hits and we're like, okay, she was right. Yeah. And then we started doing it again. But we've we've gained so much traction and love and support from everyone that it's becoming worth awesome. it. And my, now my mom and dad are starting to see it. And they're like, you know what? We think you guys can do this now. Mm-hmm. And that was like the strongest supportive words they've ever said. Like, no, I yeah. love you. No, anything is like, well, I think you can do this. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the the thing is like, even if you have Asian parents, they could be really strict or have expectations. But when they see that you really love something, mm-hmm. I think it changes a little bit. Mm. With my parents, I was never good at school. So they're never like, he has he has the grades to do this, that. And my mom would always rub in my face. She'd see a pharmacist and be like, you don't want to do that, do you? I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck, I'm mom? Fuck you, God. What the fuck? <laughs> but then she, it's because like, you don't like her fried rice. <laughs> fuck you. She's holding it against fuck, you. Fuck, <laughs> my, hey, mom, dude. No, it's funny, you taught so. me how to cook it. I make it better than you now. She told me that. She told me that. She's like, hers is better than mine. What the hell? But either way, like, it's so like when your parents see that you actually are passionate about something, it helps them kind of want you to be happy. And it's like, if this could be fruitful for them, like, go for it. Because I, I remember working like my first retail job and then my parents just thought it was a job, but I just got really into it. And then I started buying all these clothes. And at first the conversation was like, wow, you always spend all your money on clothes. Why you got so much clothes? And then one day my dad was like, nice shoes. <laughs> and then it just like kind of changes over time. And you got to you got to give your parents a little bit of the grace for yeah. that. Um, but it's, it's scary nonetheless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So when you went to culinary school, was there like a specific thing that you really want to learn? Like any type of cuisine that you were like, I want to master this one? Not really. So like. Traditional culinary school, they teach you French techniques and, Mm -hmm. like, French cuisine. And so going into that, like, I had no experience doing it. So I was just, like, all there. But in my mind, I was kind of like, I'm here to more so beat these guys. Mm. I'm here to, like, show for myself, you know. Like, I couldn't cook very well. (laughs) 
I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> like I started off probably like the first six weeks. I was like so bad, so horrible. But I like I gave it my all, you know. Mm-hmm. And I'm like till this <clears> day, I still give it my all. And then now, with that being said, you know, I'm like one of the instructors at that culinary school, teaching mm-hmm. the classes, doing events, all that kind of stuff. What's kind of like uh, the vibe when you go to culinary school? Like anything down from how the classes are structured, even how the students interact. Like I've heard it's a little interesting. You know, mine, I feel like it was very different because my class was during COVID. Mm. Uh, yeah. And so my class was me and then two other people and one instructor. Oh, damn. Wow. Oh, shit. Yeah. Really? So it was all hands on. <clears throat> like no matter like where you were struggling, you had like an instructor there. He was always there to help you. And then I actually did two culinary studies. So I went to Vietnam for six months to do a study abroad at a culinary school out there. And my class size was like 20 to one. Wow. Whoa. Yeah. And so like so I went different. out there to learn all the cuisines and everything, right? Traditional ways to do everything. But I didn't get to cook anything. <laughs> really? What? That's the thing. Because the oh. class size was so big that oh, there was only okay. one teacher. So we would just make one like potluck thing, mm. you know? Mm. And so it was just basically just observing. Yeah. Did you feel like that was, with that style of learning and teaching, was that something that you were adapting to? And then did you take a lot from it? I feel like I did take, like, a lot more than, like, what the other students took from it just because I've been in the industry already, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. learning the ways of, like, strict French teachers, Italian teachers, that kind of thing. And so going to, like, Vietnam, I already had the experience with everything. I was just kind of there to see how they like season yeah. and just like mm-hmm. different culture basically yeah, yeah learn my own culture yeah because they use a lot of different like spices everything is like way different in asia yep. even like when my <clears throat> parents cook they have like a drawer full of all these asian spices you like have to go to the asian store for yeah, yeah. all right and how was it like six months is a pretty long time to be away from home yeah. how was that experience you know i got family out there and everything but going like two months in i was already ready to, like to yeah. come home because, mm-hmm. like, I felt like I wasn't learning that much. But, mm-hmm. like, coming back, I realized that, like, I learned a lot, you know. Yeah. But struggling with, like, just the amenity side of everything. Mm-hmm. And, like, I love Vietnamese food, right? But sometimes I crave a burger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can't eat. Yeah. <laughs> I can't eat just, like, Vietnamese food every single day. Mm-hmm. Like, I ordered Mexican food out in Vietnam. It was so bad. <laughs> It's funny because we ate, we had uh, Vietnamese food in Japan. Yeah. And it literally said pho, like pho something. And then we go in and I was like, it does not smell like pho. I think we're in the <laughs> wrong place. And I find out they're making instant pho, the packs. Oh. And they're selling it in Tokyo. And then um, I was like, I'm not getting the pho. So I got the bone. And then I was like, because it's like the, it's a steak skillet with the the egg and the pate yeah. and, the, and, the, and then the bread. And, the, and then I was like. Yeah, I'm going to eat this. I don't want to eat the instant. That's crazy. Yeah, she in was Japan? Cr- in Japan. I mean, I was like, like, how do you get away with this? Uh, I don't know. Actually, the only bad restaurant we went to in Japan <clears throat> is the, the Chinese restaurant. Mm-hmm. So maybe they're just not good at other, <laughs> other cuisines. They're getting much. better now. I'm sure they are. Definitely I'm better sure. now. I'm now sure. they have like the, <laughs> that Lao restaurant out there that's popping. Lao restaurant? It's, a, it's not Thai. It's Lao. So, Damn, psychoc. Yep. For the win. Um, Tony, so <clears throat> were you... You went to culinary school for two years, you said? Yeah, basically. And that though, that was during COVID the whole time? So my, I mean, culinary, year, but... my culinary program was only three months. Okay. The one oh. here in the States. Yeah. It was an accelerated program. It's not like your traditional, like, whatever, upstate yeah. New York culinary mm-hmm. program where mm-hmm. you have to do, basically, you have to get your associate's degree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mine was like an accelerated one where you still get all your certifications and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. And the then... Yeah. yeah. And then going to Vietnam, I got like all the same thing, but just for Vietnamese cuisine. Because I was going to say, ah. you, so you guys weren't able to cook at all then? Not really. It was more so just like prep stuff, like mm-hmm. prep ah. this out, wash these vegetables, wash them, get them ready for the teacher. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like I that's, that's a so lot of it. It is challenging because yeah. it's more of building routine than actual learning of the cook. And that's why, like, even fundamentals. Like, if you watch like a lot of the sushi videos, like becoming a sushi chef is like one of the hardest yeah. things to get into because you spend prepping. Yeah, you spend ten years prepping, and then you're finally thrown onto the floor, 
and expected to know what to do. And then you're like, damn, I did 10 years of prepping and I actually know what I'm doing. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's crazy. So I watch all those. Like, I literally watch mm-hmm. all the videos on, on different techniques of like how people cook and like how long it takes for them to really grasp onto stuff. Yeah. I just, once again, I think it'd be challenging to like learn how to cook without actually cooking. You know, I, I did it, but I'm saying I, I get that. But like, it's just I, like, there's I all know. these things you do to prep, but I don't know. I was just like, who trial, taught you how to Dougie? Trial and yourself. Error. I mean, well, it's, like, hey, it's hey, in me, not all me. Exactly. It's, like, sure, it's, it's in you. It's in me, not all me, dude. You just get Mr. miyagi into doing it. Yeah, and that's yeah. kind of it. It's like, you know, wax on, wax off for how long? And then you're eventually going to be like, block that. <laughs> it's like, what the heck? <laughs> um, so you did that. So, so that's pretty cool that that was an accelerated program that you were able to get into. Because I always thought about like doing culinary school, like growing up. And because I yeah. thought that was the one. I'm not good at school at all. <laughs> so that was the one thing that turned me away from doing culinary school because you had to go and get your associates and still do some schooling, right? right. And mm-hmm. so that's really cool to hear that there was a program here in Utah that Accelerated allows, because I looked into the Park City one and that was the, that you had to go to your associates while doing it as well. Oh, really? Yeah, that was early on. Oh, I looked in like strange. 2013 <laughs> and then I think it's changed as of COVID right. because now more people are starting to get into trades that allow them to get certificates versus getting a full degree. Yeah. Right, yeah. like getting computer, going into computer science or anything computer now, you can go to Def Point just and do, yep. get it done in three yeah. months, right? Yeah. Accelerator program. Which is really nice because you just want it. You already know what you want. Go right for it. Yeah. Like if I had the opportunity when I was younger, I was like, I would have skipped those steps and be like, mm-hmm. okay, cool. I didn't have to do schooling, but I could do something that I love. Yeah. yeah. And with like uh, just your career path, because you're a private chef. I am. Why did you decide to go that route aside from like going in and working for a restaurant, right. just kind of going that way? So I actually did. I oh. went, I started at the bottom, you know. Mm. No matter like what culinary school you go to, you get your cer- certification, your degree, whatever. You walk into a restaurant, you're starting at the bottom. You're starting because mm-hmm. there's so many people ahead of you at that point. You know, you're gonna get thrown on dish pit and just wash dishes for like two weeks, mm-hmm. and then they'll see if like you're actually made of it. You know, like, yeah. Dishes is like one of the most hard things in a whole restaurant. You know, I, you have to keep bro, up with everything. Crazy. And so if you don't even make it past, like, the first two days doing dishes, you know, then you can't handle being on the line. But yeah. it's true. I did I restaurants. Dish pit sucks, dude. I did not think about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, my first job ever, I was a busboy, so I was giving the dishwasher all my dishes, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then our dishwasher was sick, dude. He was just, like, jamming to music. He was having the best time <laughs> every night. What restaurant were you in? It was Sakana in Jordan Landing. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not but super busy, though. It's not super busy, but yeah. we had busy nights. And yeah. there's, like, big parties. And he's the only dishwasher because we had oh, that corner. Oh, okay, that's fucked. Yeah, yeah. No, he was the... And, like, hearing you say that made me think, he's, he's fucking gangster. <laughs> that's crazy. <clears throat> and what other jobs did you do while you're, like, in the restaurant? Or was, like, you weren't even able to get up to the line? No, so, like, I worked my way all the way up to mm-hmm. CDC, which is executive chef. <sighs> and so that... I got that job about three years into my culinary, mm. like, or restaurant, you know, career. Yeah. Okay. So I was in restaurants for three years, and then I got that position as a CDC. And all of a sudden, this guy comes along, you know, there's another private chef here in Utah, and he kind of just walks into the restaurant, and he's like, do you actually like working here? I was like, nah. Mm-hmm. And so he just kind of, like, took me under his wing, and took me around to, like, different events, different catering jobs, that kind of deal, and just, like, started showing me, like, what this world is actually about, like, the private chef world. Mm-hmm. And I spent, like, a year, year and a half with him. And now I'm just on my own, doing my own thing with my own clients, you know, doing as much as I can as, like, a culinary instructor, you know. It's, like, it's really important to me to make sure that these students pass, but mm-hmm. it's also, like, I have my clients and everything. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Damn, that's a because I was very. You did the traditional route, and then obviously you went to more of a personal way of looking at cooking. Because a lot of a lot of people that did do a lot of stuff during COVID, it's one thing I watched was uh, a lot of chefs did go into their private direction yep. because ultimately they weren't just making money based off their clients; they were making money based off social media. So a lot of them grew really big on social media, and mm-hmm. you know because of COVID. 
people yeah. had to sit at home. What were you doing? You're watching people cook. Yep. Oh. That's what, hey. We watch a ton. Brian sends me a food video all every day, you know? <laughs> oh, my God. The, but it's because, like, he's always trying to figure out, like, how to make something or, like, this is good or whatever. He, so he wants an opinion of someone else. And I was like, damn, dude, this is stuff I watch. Like, I watch Fuck That Solicit every day. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know, like, I Action Bronson. I watch him every day. It's not even like my favorite cooking stuff, but his take on food is really... He just loves to cook. Mm-hmm. And it's really entertaining to watch and hear him talk <laughs> about it because he's just doing it. Like, it's not in fancy smanchy most of the time, but he <laughs> also gets there. But, like, he just enjoys food. Mm-hmm. I, like, it's, that's why I love watching Yeah. Him. And when you, when you find a chef that enjoys food as much as he does, you're like, okay, mm-hmm. I respect it. Yeah. Because yeah. most chefs don't enjoy food. They enjoy yeah. the process of cooking and doing all this stuff. But when it comes down to actual eating it, they, you, I cannot take a chef's real take on food for some reason. Mm. Well, it's like, I mean, you remind me of some. My, my first favorite cooking show growing up was Emeril. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? He's like, he's the bam guy. He's like, he's like the stocky Italian guy. He goes bam anytime he sees in some. Somebody got to know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but he was just like that very much he just enjoyed cooking food and it was just so in like intoxicating to watch because he would do it in front of a live audience and he would just be cooking for the entire audience and it was freaking sick what is um the difference between being a private chef and being on a line i mean there's not much except that you're by yourself you Mm -hmm. know because on a line you got people prepping for you You, like people prep ahead for you you know but the thing is with like being a private chef, I feel like you 100% need to be on the line mm-hmm. because you need to learn like how to get everything out on time, like all your food and like make sure your prep's like up. And then, you know, if you just like, kind of like slowly do things, you know, you're just going to like ruin your client's day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So you're just like a one man band, the like while you're cooking and then getting it out to your clients. Is that the deal? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, the chef, the prep, <laughs> the dishwasher, everything. Even your own secretary, I'm sure you have to like schedule your own clients. <laughs> yeah. all that. That's a whole other mess. So yeah. do you go to the locations or do you just cook at home or no? So how does that look? I just go straight up to their house. Yeah. Yeah. Some, I used to do like, Airbnb kind of stuff, but nowadays, like, just these past few months, I've gotten just two clients, and those are the only two I take care of. Mm. So I only take care of two families, and then I do my culinary instruction, and that's it. Mm. Wow, I hate I hate catering. Yeah, not gonna lie, the the people that can do catering, good on you. But props to them. Yeah, we were invited to uh, actually catering te- uh, taste testing for Miss Saigon. Um, it's the family over at Mila Kai Nuda House, and we were able to go and try that stuff out. You guys will see a vlog about the stuff on Friday. Um, but it was cool. It was like the first event where I was able to really go and see and try different things that people haven't released yet and see their different takes on how cuisine is. Because I know with them, Mila Kai Nuda House, the one thing about them is that Asians will not say is made for Asians but it's catered to other ethnicities, right? And so they get a lot of bashing for that. But then you walk in, they have the same old white dude that's been going there for the last 10 years. And it's like, why do people think this food's not good? When, you know, obviously is bringing, you know, customers back every time. Mm-hmm. Cause I would go there on a Wednesday and be like, same guy, <laughs> literally the same guy, dude. And he's same like, guy. he's like, same guy. That's what he's thinking about me. <laughs> Let's say catering seems tough, but I feel like dealing with <clears throat> like not customers, well, customers. Yeah, I feel like if it's not mm-hmm. done right, or it's this, that, and the third, it's just like, well, it's already done. I'm making a large amount of mm-hmm. this type of food. I it's, can't really hit that. It's spot hard for you, too. You know, it's hard. Really, it's hard. Yeah, because like for me too, my like take on our wedding when we when we got the chow mein and stuff from like Red Maple. Yeah, yeah. It, we all went there and tried it. We're like, okay, this is definitely good enough to be yeah, at yeah. our wedding, and we get it at our wedding. We're like, what the hell is this? This is not like what red, we ordered. I like red maple too. Which yeah. Sucks. Mm. And so like it sucked because that we would go there every weekend, you know, and mm-hmm. they're where else are you gonna get a fifteen dollar plate as big as that, other than like freaking Panda Express from <laughs> Yeah. You know, and they, they overload that shit. Like the lunch and like dinner um menu is crazy. So after that I was like, it really turned me away from how catering. I looked at I looked at their restaurant. Though. Oh well, not yeah. just catering, but mm-hmm. I was like I would not recommend it to other people now because of that yeah, one yeah. instant with with me. Yeah. 
Did you do catering at all? You said you did a little, right? Yeah, I did a little. I did a, a handful of events, like as big as like 400, oh, like as small as wow. like people. 100, you know? Yeah. But even cooking for more than 10 people is a lot to me. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. like, I feel like I can handle like 10 to 20 people just on my own. Like, mm-hmm. I don't need like another cook or another like anything. Like I can handle it on my own. But getting up into those numbers, you need like, 30 plus servers and mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. five, six, seven chefs, whatever, you know, and then it's just not for me. What has been your favorite, uh, favorite thing about this career path? Honestly, it's like the personal connection that you get with mm-hmm. like whatever client, you know, like I make sure that, you know, that my client is a good fit for me, not only food wise, but personality wise, right? Mm-hmm. Cause like I'm in their house like, even if they're not home, I'm in their house. I get to hear, like, yeah. whatever, like, personal stuff they're talking about, you know? And, like, being around their family, their friends, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. And so getting to, like, really be able to have, like, that personal connection with the family is, like, something that I really value. And, like, I love my client. I talk to him all the time. And then, you know, we just talk about random stuff. He enjoys my food. Mm-hmm. He gives me complete freedom. He doesn't have any restrictions. And, like, wow, so nice. he just gives me freedom. I just I play with my food, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's got to be amazing as a chef yeah, to feel that nice. way. Because, you know, when you're working at a restaurant, you have to cook yeah. that way. Yeah. But for you as a private chef, you have – and to have free range from a client as well, because that's, that's really awesome. rare. Right. That's rare, rare in this. And, and be and, paid. Yeah, and be yeah. paid for yeah. what yeah. you get to do. It's, it's amazing awesome. to hear because – that way you don't kind of lose yourself in it. Because yeah. that's what a lot of chefs talk about is they yeah. lose ourselves in the cooking because they forget what they are there truly for. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I've definitely felt that, like, throughout my career. You know, I've been knocked down hella. I've been, like, hit. I've been just always thinking about, like, in the back of my head that I don't want to continue this, you know. Mm-hmm. But finally being at the point where I'm at, you know, I'm glad I just kept going. Yeah. 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 What is the one Tony special that if someone walked up Tony to you special. and they were like, oh, you're a private chef. I was like, yeah. how would you get them as a client? You know, it all starts with a trial week. Mm. That's it. I don't got to tell you what you're eating. I just show up and I just kind of throw down, you know. They just give me like a base of like what they like. And mm. I just, I just show up. And then you show up with the ingredients or they have the ingredients? No, I show up with okay, the ingredients. Yeah. yeah, I don't trust people to buy anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah like, people that that's order really shit. Yeah, yeah. People that order shit yeah. on like Walmart or all that shit and let the hey, workers pick. Hey, them. hey. Mm-hmm. Target pickup is great. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you order from Target? No, like the food? Like, like vegetables uh, and like produce and stuff? Yeah. Ugh. He said, yeah. <laughs> when I'm in a hurry. He said, yeah. I don't know. You have a Smith's right there. Well, that's even worse, too. But. Well, like, the tar- yeah. the prices at Target are better, but they're not that bad, dude. Mm. And we look in and inspect <laughs> it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's fucking sick. Dude, no, I've, went, I've, I've gone to Walmart, and I've seen them pick, and I'm like, these fools that, do not look. Okay. They do not look. They just grab. And same thing with Smith's, and same thing with Target. They just they don't even look. Thing. They just grab. Yeah, I don't do that either. Not I for go, Union I go Target. Target. Myself. Not for Union Target. They're great. Sponsor us. Maybe. <laughs> I love it, but it's like, yeah, I get your point, but at the same time, it's very convenient, and they haven't like. But that if, if there's if they're just grabbing shitty shit, then they don't got good shit. Honestly, okay, like for if you're doing it for like a family, pretty, I get it. You're you pretty know? naive for yeah, that, Moose. Yeah. Honestly, but for pretty naive, my ass. But for me, <laughs> since I love to cook, like I like being, I love being at the grocery store. That's yeah. like my one. Oh, don't pe- get me wrong. One yeah. place I'm at peace with myself. Mm-hmm. Even crazy. though I got fucked up, he's just like, yeah. fucking no, no, slipped no, on a cherry. Really? Fucked me up, dude. What? Yeah, that shit at the grocery me. store? Yeah, that shit took me down. Where were you at? It was fucking Walmart. I was just walking. I was like, walking normal and then a that fucking like cherry. <laughs> <laughs> Walk That'd be normal. crazy. An NPC. I like Tate NPC. ever walk like this, dude. <laughs> That's my uh, I never even seen him swing his arms. So. Yeah. Oh my God. But I was just That's walking crazy. and then I was like, oh, fuck. And I'm like, I fell slow. Amy's like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> I fell. My knee buckled. And I'm just sitting there like, fuck, dude. Fucking Cherry took me out. <laughs> it's fucking uh, crazy. It's, this is like the Mario Mario yeah. Kart all over. Yeah, dude. yeah. That's what exactly <laughs> what it is. I get you, though. I do like to go grocery shopping, but in a in a pinch, just grab the shit. I hear you. Yeah. Either way. I'm Makes honest. sense. No, I, I get it. And that's why people do it. Like when people have big families, they have they can't go to the grocery oh, store yeah, and like I see them load. But if you have everything. the time and just just go because that's the one time you get to really sit at a store and be like, This is what that's I what want. you're yeah. putting in your yeah, body, yeah. dude. Yeah. 
You guys act like I do it for every meal. It's only in a pinch. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> it's only in a pinch. And in a pinch, if I got to get home, man. Yeah. To Harvey. To Harvey. I got okay. a family. That kid don't eat kibble. So you like to pick out your stuff, <laughs> and then you like to go. And I, I I think it's really cool that you still get free range and stuff. That's, That's really, really cool. To. Yeah. I was like, I'm blessed to have that. You yeah. Know? I've had clients before for, like, meal preps and that kind of things where they have mm. very strict restrictions. You know, they're on a diet here and there, you know. This guy just likes to eat, you know. He enjoys food. Yeah, that's badass. Yeah. Sounds like sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like me. <laughs> do you like life. do you enjoy your own cooking? I do. Yeah. So I tend to only eat my cooking. That's mm-hmm. the thing. Mm-hmm. Like I love going out to eat, you know. But I've been disappointed so many times. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, that's yeah, the thing yeah, for sure. That's me. That's my constant battle. <laughs> I want a food wars. <laughs> He's going to beat you, but I just want a food wars. That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, maybe he cool. doesn't, but I want a food wars. Exactly. You it never would, know. Yeah. If it was like a challenge more like so, like you would, we would have to make the same dish. He beat me. But okay. it was like, if I made my own dish, mm. I think I have a chance. That's yeah. Fair. That's that's valid. That's because, that's you know. valid. Because what if you make... pick the dish oh. and then I cook it? Mm. Oh, that's <laughs> fucking sexy. Oh. <laughs> that's fucking mm. tight. I still, I win. <laughs> okay. I win. You know what dish? Mm. What dish? Yeah. I win. My cup won't. I'm so tri- <laughs> no, dude, just yeah. Kapun. <laughs> yeah, I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Kapun cow. That's no. fucking. That's or, that sounds. That sounds just a curry and rice. Yeah. My my ah, uh, uh, your ah uh, is pretty good. But see, I'm picking stuff that he's like not has fully be, familiar with because it's more of a like you eat at like an old Asian house. Tastes I love Kapun. Kapun's really yeah, good. Yeah, I love it. It's not too hard. I mean, hard to master, but not. Hey, hard. honestly, yeah. people, it's funny because people master. say that, and then they so they they'll come try the kapun, and they're like, "Wow, it's really good, good, good kapun." And then they'll try. My brother tried to mimic it, and he's like, "I cannot figure it out." No hmm. way. No, he could not figure it out because he would like look up recipes, and he's like, "How does Tay make it?" And he, so he called me. He's like, "How do you make it?" I'm like, "I do mine a very specific way." I like, I. I knew it was friggin'. I'm never gonna figure it out because I've had really good kapun my whole life. And he comes around, <laughs> just destroys the whole thing. And I'm like, there's some fucking black magic here, dude. This is crazy. It's just my hair. <laughs> the black magic. Monkey King. No, but honestly, I no much more respect to you because I, I wouldn't say that I would actually win because you have more of the culinary training that it takes to be able to like, if I, like I said, random dish, you're beating me nine times out of 10. <laughs> There's no way I'm putting up anything. But if like, really, if I had to sit at home and like that was our, me and you were sitting side by side, it's right. like, okay, let's make this. It's like, okay, now I, I've had years of this experience it. versus, you know, you're coming into it and like, I've never really tried this dish, but I know what goes into it. And right. that's where the basics come in. It's like, I know how to make it, but I don't know how to get to that level yet. Cause you have to, it's trial and error. I've, right. Man, it took me like six years to really figure that out to mm-hmm. where I'm like, this is it. This is where oh, I'm at. Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. It takes a while. Practice, practice. Have you made kapun before? I'm assuming you have. I made it once. Once. Still respect, though. Yeah. The, it's like, not a lot, a it's lot like of the things. same thing, you know? Like, if I challenge you to a pho, like a pho making contest. Oh. He got my, good <laughs> You know, I don't know. I've learned countless. I learned every single You have, to give, me, you have to give me 72 hours, though. Because there's like, he <laughs> yeah. makes, he makes lots. 48. He he does he makes like lao pho though. Mm, uh, it's like an in between. It's like an in between of like. I feel like okay, it's an in between. When yeah. when I cook, you know, like the thing about Asian cuisine is like when you're eating like a broth or something, you're wanting to season it at the end, right? So right. a lot of people do all that stuff. So lao pho mm-hmm. is actually more so the beef base at the end. So that's why you see it at the table. I don't do that. Yeah. Mine's pre seasoned. Everything comes ready, so you don't even have to put hoisin, sriracha, any of that. Mine comes. Which you ready. really shouldn't anyway, in my yeah. opinion. But like, so mine is fully prepped in a way that like I, I will cook my, I would I make the broth for 48 hours, let it sit overnight, let the fat coagulate, sit at the top, take the fat out. Right. And then you add that at the end. So that's like the extra punch of flavor. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so that's pretty good. traditional, you know, it's so good. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm just saying fun in general. No. F- yeah. 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 Okay. It's, it's Mary right. fuck kill. Okay. Oh, oh. oh. This is pho, great. Uh, Bunryeol, mm-hmm. Bumoy. All right. I'm killing pho. Mm, see? Killing That's pho? It. I'm killing yeah. pho. Because it's just ABG or what? What's going on? You know. But I between the, the three people. The three. Between oh, the three. Okay, yeah. You know, I'm killing pho. I'm 
Getting a fuck boom. <laughs> oh, boom real. He's going to say yeah. boom real. Yeah. I'm going to say boom real. And then I'm going to marry boom boy. Yeah. Yeah. But boom boy is the. the it's like, it's like the, kapun. But it's shrimp paste and like. Shrimp paste. Yeah. yeah. It's and like lemongrass. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Boom yeah. real is like the. Be, the crab. Oh, it's a crab mm-hmm. one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Crab tomato. Yeah. Okay. Crab tomato. Mm. Okay. Crab yeah. I like boom boy. I'm killing that. I'm killing Bunreal, yeah. Because <laughs> it's going to kill you. It's going to kill me. <laughs> I don't have you a choice. Eat yeah. You can't eat that. Uh, I'm going to marry Fa for sure. She's consistent. Um, Boomba Way, we're going to fuck. But she's like more just like, she didn't like me that much anyway. But we had a connection. And Bunreal never gave me a chance. I can't. I can't put it on. I can't do it because I'm allergic to both. <laughs> oh, because it's Bunreal and yeah. Boomba Way. Boomba Way so, is so yeah. good though. Yeah, I'm allergic to that. So Fa. Mary fuck kill and fuck. <laughs> just fuck. <laughs> just fuck. It's funny. So I, I only asked that because there was um uh you know who Twita Bay is? Yeah. So she Wait. actually did a little segment and she's with a chef and they were like, Okay, Mary fuck kill, soy sauce, fish sauce, and then oyster sauce. Okay. What would you do? Mm. You know, I'm killing oyster sauce. Oyster mm. sauce. Yeah. And wow. then I'm marrying fish sauce. And fucking oh. soy sauce. Wow. Yeah. See, mine is because uh, a lot of Lao cooking has oyster sauce in it, so I have to they marry. Love oyster but see, sauce. I'm marrying fish sauce because a lot of our sauces right. are made of fish sauce. Oh yeah, gel. And then Just yeah, literally and everything. Yeah. And then mm. I'm gonna marry or I'm gonna fuck oyster sauce and then kill soy sauce. I have a I tendency really of not really though. using soy sauce in a lot of stuff. Really? Besides mm-hmm. fried rice, I guess. Use Golden uh, I, Mountain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's Golden Mountain? The the green label, seasoning, green, yeah, green that's, caps. Yeah, yeah, that's the soy sauce. Yeah, freaking, I don't know. That's a hard one. I really, it's hard for me to choose. I love fish sauce though. Too. Fish, it's like, what do I do with fish? Well, my oyster? mom cooks everything with oyster sauce, bro. See, that's everything, what I was bro. When you're, when, it, stuff, when you're looking man. at it from a Lao perspective, you're like, fuck, we make everything with oyster sauce, bro. Everything, but then it's, it's so like, unhealthy too. It's yeah. But crazy. it's also you look at it, <laughs> it's just dense. You look at it, you're like, fuck, dude. But then we also dip and everything in fish sauce. Yeah. So you lose. Yeah. When I think about it, I probably kill. I cannot eat a bun cell. I cannot not eat bun cell for the rest of my sauce. life. Oh, so that's, I, I yeah. would think about that one. Yeah, I'm marrying fish sauce for sure. Yeah. I might have to. Like, you can put Nook Mom in everything. This is the hardest decision. <laughs> everything. <laughs> you really, you really could. Crack. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Your hair got crazier. I know. Me too. I've been thinking, dog. I've thinking. I have been thinking i got a haircut today. i got to retrain this <laughs> shit. <laughs> Leave it alone. It looked like a flat top right now. Really? <laughs> He's like, ah. <laughs> nice. I guess I got, I, I think it'd be fun to fuck Fun. <laughs> <laughs> fun We're not to, talking about being fun, no, dude. No. No. Fun to fuck uh, fish sauce, you know, fish sauce. With th- I got to marry fish? soy sauce, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm the voice of a generation. And then I guess I got to kill. Yeah, I got to kill oyster sauce. That makes me sad. Yeah, I could live without oyster sauce, though. I could, too. But my, yeah. like I said, my mom could accept yeah, with that. Same with it, my mom. It's too. different for you because you're at home. I know. And so yeah. like that's what is there, right? I'm like, wow, this is unhealthy. Mm-hmm. Say you love it though. I said I do. <laughs> so now that you're now that you're more, you know, you're a chef and you, you have a tendency of more cooking for yourself. Yeah. Um, do you have any like food takes that you would like you're looking out in the world, you're like, man, I would not do it that way. Oh. Yeah, no. I tend to like just do my own thing. Mm-hmm. I take my own takes on everything, you know. Mm-hmm. I, that's why I went to Vietnam. I learned the traditional way, and now I mix it however I want. Mm-hmm. But I keep the base of it so people don't get mad at me, Yeah, technically. But also, I don't mm-hmm. care. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's going to taste good. And that's like kind of the point, too. You're supposed to, and you said, too, you like to have fun with your food. Yeah. So I think it's just like, yeah, whatever you want to do, just do it. Mm-hmm. Is, is there, there like rules like that when it comes to cooking? Obviously, a lot, yeah, dude. There's, Whoa, there's, there's like, like it's like if someone from not your culture is trying to tell you how to cook it, you know. Like if you see mm. someone from Utah <laughs> try to cook just like a pho and use like ramen noodles, that kind of thing, and they're like oh, trying to say it, fu- oh. right? So like I saw someone make nam cow, but <laughs> she used like she didn't make the rice crispy. Mm. And oh. she like called it Nam Cow. Dude, but there was she's the, like Nam Cow. Nam Cow. <laughs> she, they did that. The, there was one girl that made it and she she didn't make it crispy as well. And she's like, it's healthier this way. No. And it's like, what the hell? Bitch, you season rice. 
<laughs> that's what she did. That's all. That's, at the end of the day, yeah. that's what Nam Cow is seasoned rice. But if you don't fry it, it takes away from the whole purpose yeah, of the Nam Cow. Yeah, yeah, and for she, sure. Oh, when they don't use the somu, the somu, sour pork, yeah, somu, yeah. it does not <laughs> taste. <laughs> so it does not taste right. It well, just tastes like fried in rice. There? Cilantro. Yeah, I take the peanuts oh, out. I love peanuts. I love the peanuts, and yeah. I used to not like it when I was a kid. But that's like mikati. I love mikati. No, sometimes when they do, yeah. when they do it, they burn. Like one peanut and it ruins the flavor oh for the God. whole thing. Whatever. Yeah. I like it. I like, like, mm. like the charred. Yeah, the yeah, little like charred the peanut. peanuts. A couple of them. It's fine with me. Where are you guys getting Nam Cal from? My mom. My mother. My mom and or my aunt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, it's my mother. Yeah. For <laughs> sure. It's like uh, whenever you're at like a like a like a Lao party there, with though. a lot of with a lot of OGs, it's always gonna be Nam Cal yeah. there for yeah. some reason. Somebody brings it. It's like our version of fried rice, almost I like to say. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's like true. basically, you gotta love it, dude. You gotta love it. It's so good. I That's love uh, loud parties. Oh, <laughs> Vietnamese parties. Like, really? You like Hennessy? You like Hennessy? You like Hennessy? <laughs> you like Hennessy? <laughs> Get some Hennessy. <laughs> we got shots. <laughs> Tony's at the next loud party for sure. Yeah, for sure. I gotta no. When we well, get into, yeah. when we get settled into our house, I'm gonna invite you over to eat some yeah. food with us. I'm actually really surprised you like knew just a lot of loud things that we're talking about. Well, actually, he said his sister, yeah, cooked yeah. it. I know, and, like, but she was around a lot of loud. But even yeah. that, like, how old, yeah, how old is your sister? Old. <laughs> we talk. Why about do you say that? <laughs> Gen-, Gen X. Wait, Tony, how old are you? Twenty three. Okay. Twenty three. Yeah. yeah. So, and my sister's at least double my age. Oh, really? 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 Damn! Now I'm trying to figure out what a lot of people she was kicking. Yeah, with. God, I'm yeah. like trying to think of because we know everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you throw a name out there, yeah. I know their family. Yeah, honestly. Chantalise. Oh, okay. That's not from the Salt Lake area. No. Yeah, I was going to say, I haven't. That's, that's more on Cash Valley. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Because I knew I knew one of them because I saw him at the Thai, um, the Thai uh, temple up in Layton. Really? Yeah. So, right when you said that, I already knew they're not from. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And for those who are not uh, familiar with like Lao culture, just it's like it's like Game of Thrones, but with Lao people. Not just fucking each other. Different names. <laughs> where, where did you grow up, Tony? <laughs> like crazy. Huh? I grew up in Logan. Ah, Logan. see, there we go. That's yep. that's why we don't know. We don't know, but we don't know them. Mm. Okay. <laughs> you cross like the I would name off some threshold. more, but like I'm, I can't that, pronounce it. <laughs> I can't. It's all good. It's okay. Yeah. Just start throwing out the alphabet. We'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing I'm curious on is like we talk. You like to eat your food, but what's like your thing that you love to make yourself? Like your comfort meal. My comfort meal is probably just a good steak, a good Ooh, piece yeah. of ribeye. You know. Yep. Yeah, cooked medium rare. Yeah, and then you know I love me some gel song. Oh, I love that's guy. my go-to sauce. Oh, uh, when I make that so for good. when I make that for clients, I just call it Asian chimichurri. They eat it up. <laughs> Asian <laughs> chimichurri. They eat it up because like they're gonna be like, what's gel song? Why is yeah, there yeah. fish sauce in it? Why it's better it than toasted? calling it crack sauce. I would I would have <laughs> yeah. ended the podcast well, yeah. right now if you called it crack <laughs> nah, sauce. Nah, nah, nah. Nah. No, I don't. I hate. I hate it. Who I know you're mad about it no. all the time. Dude, people call it crack on sauce? the fucking internet, white people teaching people how to make gel so call it crack sauce. Oh my God. Yo. Yeah. It's and it's, the, who was it? David David Chang. Motherfucker. David Chang. Motherfucker. I really don't like David Chang. It's not LARB. It's, oh, oh yeah. People keep saying David Chang is so fucking frustrating. Okay, here's the thing, all right? If David Chang, if you watch this. Makes game, a fire ass duck though. You, you can cook. <laughs> you're great. But sometimes you fucking suck, and it's annoying. He knows he's disrespectful. That's why he does that yeah. shit on purpose. No, what if who's David Chang? Big ass head. He uh, owns Momofuku. He's the guy oh. with the whole Chili Crisp yeah. drama. Chili oh. Chris. He was trying to Chili trademark Chris. Chili Chris yeah. and take it away from everyone else. Why? What do you mean? Because he wanted the name Chili Chris. He wanted oh. to be trademark under Momofuku. Yeah. He trademarked. They it. make a great Chili Chris though. They His make, soy sauce is fire. Yeah. See, yeah. and I'm not taking Momofuku's that away from them. They do great <laughs> shit, <laughs> dude. That f- the noodles are Momofuku great. and fucking Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas. Fucking great service. Great. Never stop. You bring about out it. that fucking duck and you get it fucking made it. five ways. Is like never stop talking. Crazy about it. Yeah, so good. So we have good. to go. I have I to get a try. We're gonna go. Like the duck confit fried rice on the bottom, fucking crispy on the bottom, and then you fucking flip it over, and then you get this fluffy ass rice and you put it in a fucking bun or you put it in a fucking lettuce wrap and you eat the duck. Man. Sauce? Is there sauce? There is oyster sauce. Yeah. Uh, but no, that duck does not it need sounds it. Sounds amazing. It's, it's like it takes them like I think a week to process. Uh, oh really? Yeah, like it takes they have to like they like dry age it, they do all this stuff with it, and then it takes about a week and then when it's finally cooked, like they cook it right. I think they cook it the night before and then they get ready for service. But the when they cut that shit open and you forget that fucking fried duck at the end of it because you've got the full eating that, you're like, don't need dessert. 
<laughs> Damn. But David Chang, Jesus Fuck Christ. you, David Chang. It's not lar, you make great dude. food. It's not crack shot, <laughs> It's not lar, bro. It's not lar, bro. That's the same thing with uh, Maddie Matheson. Maddie Matheson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you did you watch The Bear? I did. How did, how how <laughs> is that from your perspective about the show then? Is all that a lot of that stuff kind of true that kind of happens in the kitchen? Nowadays, no. Mm. Nowadays, mm-hmm. like I feel like when I started like back when doing fine dining, all that kind of thing, it was like a little like it was there a little bit still, but nowadays like you don't have people yelling at you. Yeah. And like it's they're, really they're overplayed, but I got so much PTSD. Oh. <laughs> uh, Cause I started when it was still like, you know, still a little rough out there, but now I just don't ever see it. Maybe it's because I'm not in restaurants anymore, mm-hmm. but I don't see it. I hear like the the mix. It's like some French kitchens, they're like, yeah, it can be like that sometimes, especially with some people getting really pissed off or nothing going or something getting chucked because it's just been sitting too long. Yeah. Stuff like that, but not like the crazy yelling. Yeah. 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 I don't see it at all. I mean, I see it here and there actually. But that's between the I guys. feel like you guys have it more established. So when you have a restaurant like it's true, Chris, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah. It's a fucking well oiled machine. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's just more like runners arguing with the fucking chef because a runner fucked up or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which happens a lot. Yeah. But I think it's like, do <clears throat> you say that the uh, the pressure in the kitchen, like the having to keep up with things, especially if you get behind, do you feel that kind of stress being in the kitchen? Or when you were? Yeah, for sure. Like, yeah. I worked in like super high volume restaurants where we would do like, I don't know, like 200 covers a night. Mm. So we would get slammed. Like my like, whole like pos system would be back like 40 orders and so i've and definitely been keep going yeah we yeah. just have to keep going like you can't break down you can't yeah. like you just have to keep going you know and like when you have like a head chef in front of you and you're a line cook and you break down they're just gonna like literally kick you off the line. <laughs> they're like what yeah. the fuck you doing here? They're like <laughs> they're, they don't want to see you cry yeah. i don't like i've seen people break down in front of me and i'm just like get on my face <laughs> it's like, like I had Asian parents. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I don't care. Dude, as it's brutal. The respect that would be like if like let's say the guy just starts breaking down, yeah. but he's still cooking. <laughs> just like, oh, fuck, man. <laughs> uh, it's happened. It's happened. I've seen it. I've done it personally, but yeah. oh, I'm she's sure. like, no wonder that was a little extra salty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking Shaolin soccer yeah. when she's crying in the dough. Yeah. Oh my god. Tastes like sadness. <laughs> <laughs> Because I think, well, the bear, I feel like uh, people like, it's it's a good conversation starter, but it's like, the bear, these guys are all fucking crazy. Yeah. Like, it doesn't set the standard for all restaurants, but yeah. that's why I like it. Like, I mean, it might be yeah. in certain spots, sure, right? Yeah. Of course, certain restaurants, I'd assume, but like, mm-hmm. you know, when there's yeah. like, it's, it's like, it's, what is the bear? Like, is it a franchise restaurant in this? I've no, it was a family owned restaurant. See, that's why it's a family owned restaurant. It's but then they different. transitioned into a more fine dining. The bear aspect. season two. Yeah. And so it, it, you kind of see it from where it was a little mom and pop and then where it grows into because how he, Carmi takes over and then he kind of wants more. Yeah. And so it's cool to see the transition because he was in fine dining before, goes to the mom and pop because his brother passes away and then he takes over and then he's like, we, we need, can make we need this. more. Yeah. We need to do something more. You still we need to watch, watch it. it. Yeah, I it's probably so should. good. It's so good. So good. Second season's over, isn't it? Third. Third. Third, third season's over? Yeah. yeah. They I'm filmed pissed. really quick, though. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. You guys already watched the third yeah. season? You, weren't you guys talking about the second season last year? Yeah. It films fast. Yeah. It, the third Damn. one came out this year. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's over. Yeah. Fourth one's out next like, summer. If one piece was that fast, I'd... <laughs> no, you wouldn't. No, you I would wouldn't. I would get through. Because if you... Like, the show itself doesn't have very much, like post-production mm-hmm. aside from just general editing right but then it's like because there's no special effects it's just like actors being fucking dope and then yeah. i feel like they could turn around i mean that and shogun yeah. the baron shogun got like a shit ton of shogun got 18 oh, like, yeah 18 Hold, crazy. Record, record, holder. record yeah, yeah record holder it's really now. good well, and the bear still got 11 the bear yeah. just keeps on getting awards everywhere they yeah. go yeah. yeah for good reason i love that show <laughs> yeah um so aside from cooking though what do you like to do for fun you know honestly I golf a lot. Oh, no. I'm really big into golfing because that's honestly where I meet a lot of clients. I network oh, a lot. Oh, smart man. You know? That's what people say. If you want to get into business, you go golf with you people. Go golf, that's you know? so crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's so true, though. Yeah. Pay attention to how they golf. Make sure they don't cheat because they cheat on the golf course. They're going to cheat with business on you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. God. 
Pay that's attention. smart. That's smart, man. Shoot, I'm I was just, cooking. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just like, I'm were, just you, like, were you into golf before then, or you just kind of got into it? Because nah, I literally just got into it. Oh. <laughs> like one random year, I was so bad. But that at like that point, I wasn't networking with anyone. <laughs> but now that like I get to go to like country clubs and all this kind of thing. Ooh. Damn, you a bad bitch, bro. <laughs> Going on in all the fucking places, dog. Yeah. <laughs> He's been waiting to call Moose you that the whole episode. Hair, no, that was... Uh, that was uh, you gotta clip happened. that. You gotta clip Because <laughs> Moose is playing with his hair. You're a bad bitch, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, bro. You have- dude, every time I get a haircut, I gotta retrain it, dude. It's just like one of those things. You just gotta let it happen. <laughs> So you like the golf, the yeah? Because of the networking aspect, but you had you were doing it before, but now that it, you gain kind of like okay, I can kind of mix best of both worlds. So I can still golf, but then also meet new clients or introduce myself. Mm-hmm. And so you kind of take it on golf, and you're having fun with it. Do you like to do anything else other than golf? Like honestly, other than that, I just try to like take my time with mm-hmm. everything. You know, I mm-hmm. finally got like the freedom that I've been waiting for working in ah, restaurants, yeah. and so I'm just taking it in, you know, day by day. I get to come out here and do this podcast. Mm-hmm. Right. I get just freedom of my day, basically. I get to choose whether I go work or, That's you know. so tight. Yeah. So I just it's do nice. my own thing, basically. Yeah. Fuck, I fucked up. I should have just been a chef. A private <laughs> chef. You should have did it. I mean, you still can. Hey, you can, hey, you you can learn can. from Tony. <laughs> you can yeah. learn from Tony. Learn <laughs> business. It only really took me one year yeah. to get here, you know. Because you can cook. You just have to learn. I how would literally just go with Tony so he can, like, we can do memes together. And, like, <laughs> I'm like I'm the I'm his sous chef and he's like you're an idiot sandwich I'm like okay I'm I'm leaving for today <laughs> you fucking donkey <laughs> he's just that's what he's doing to me and they're like what's going oh, on <laughs> going to going to these families houses and like <laughs> <You're an idiot. laughs> Gordon Ramsay actually did that uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <You're> crazy <laughs> but <laughs> yeah that's just uh, crazy but something you mentioned before you said you love anime yeah what are your top three. I'm gonna have to say Dragon Ball. Easy. Because I grew up I grew up watching Dragon Ball. That's what got me into it. You know, mm-hmm. got me into anime. And then honestly, I took like a huge break from it until like my college days. Mm. And I finally picked up one piece that I'm gonna have to put at number two. Ooh. Uh, you got all he's just listing it. everything <laughs> on his body. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we'll say Hunter Hunter. Oh my <laughs> god! Oh, my god! Not even knowing what's the on sage. your body, he la- labeled all of them. <laughs> he said Dragon Ball. I said Dragon Ball. Yeah, yeah I got Hunter Hunter and then One Piece. Yeah, but you know, I can't get into Naruto. I'm not gonna lie. Really? I can't. It's really not for everyone. Though. Naruto's yeah. cool, man. I love Naruto. Naruto was, cool. was too sensitive for me. It was cool. It was oh too god. sensitive. Would say that the ending was, was not. The ending was pretty bad. The ending was. Uh, it didn't. It didn't end though. It's, when, well, one piece hasn't ended yet, so when that ends, when that, then we, we can, can judge. We can judge he's, yeah. he's gonna be like, uh, yeah. it just ends. They never find <laughs> one piece, and then everyone's gonna be fucking pissed. No, dude, the, <laughs> the one piece the, is the friendship. The friendship. Yeah, the one piece, yeah, is, one piece friendship. is friendship. <laughs> the friends you made along the way. Along the way. <laughs> <Dude. laughs> That's what it, in Rainbow. <laughs> it's just Luffy's one arms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Freaking throw up chopper in the sky. Yeah. Oh man, I would I would cry if that happened. I would too, but I think it's gonna. They're doing a pretty good job. What's going on? Yeah, I know. I hear every Thursday. I think it's going to be legendary. <laughs> every Thursday in Discord. That's why I haven't really picked it's up on it. It's because crazy. these guys read it. And so they... Yeah. I actually stopped watching anime because they read everything and it kind of Re- ruins oh, everything. Yeah. There was like one summer. It was like, you guys read this episode or read this uh, chapter. I'm like, dude, no. Stop fucking talking about it. And you can't say it in Discord. That's on true. a Thursday, Friday, or Saturday without someone bringing up something that happened in a chapter. That's that's how I like to enjoy One Piece though. You just watch the highlights. <laughs> Anytime something really really cool the happens, AMVs. you're like, okay, I'm gonna watch it. Yeah, like, that's Lincoln how, Park in the background. Yeah. <laughs> that's how I've caught up with One Piece for the past eight years. It's mm. just literally that. Who's okay. the latest villain? I don't know. Luffy <laughs> turns white though, and he turns into Looney Tunes. <laughs> It's a it's like, <laughs> wow, it's pretty it's cool. tight, yeah. He doesn't want to be a voice actor, so he's that. working on it. Yeah. I, I will. I oh, actually, when I was younger, I really wanted to do, do your f- best Monkey D. Luffy right now. I can't do Monkey D. Luffy. That's super specific. He's like, gum gum. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's not bad. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's not. Te- it's not terrible. <laughs> it's actually pretty bad. Yeah, that's terrible. No. But um, <laughs> yeah, that's. But I like that because when we first met, we met at the Asian Business um uh, meeting. And it was like cool that, you know, we, it was cool to see, first of all, how people are being brought together in the Asian community with different 
different types of background. I felt like really out of place because I was like, when was that? It was a while ago, was but a while I was like, that was a while. Ago. I was I like, telling us about. yeah, I do. Uh, I have a podcast. I have a clothing <laughs> brand and everyone's like in real estate or they. Yeah. Own oh, this own is business. when we had the podcast. Yeah, it yeah. was. It was this year, but it was oh, like a few months ago. It was before summer for sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. And then Tony approaches me. He was like, yo, we should collaborate on something. And I was like, I, yeah, we should have you on the podcast. When I found out he was a private chef, I thought it was cool because that was like the one question mark in my life that I wish I, that, that was still can be answered, but I was like, I wonder how life would have been if I was just chef? went and no, just went and became a chef oh, okay. because that's something that I always wanted to do. Yeah. Like I once mean, again, still I still can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But we do a podcast, so I got to do this. <laughs> I know, but you just could do should it. We do, I do. Should we do a podcast <laughs> while you chef type? And yeah. then yeah. we'll do a cooking segment. And ooh, we could. And reaction. I just and, think it's too easy. You think it's too easy for you to just jump into oh, the culinary I, you said, world? I was like, <laughs> I was like, shit. Oh, no, no, not like that, man. Damn, okay. Damn, dude, I mean, for you to just yeah. jump into cooking. My bad, G. Because you're already there. No, I ain't, I ain't that great. <laughs> he's, he's I ain't like, that confident. He's like, yeah, it's easy. I'm going to do it tomorrow. That'd be crazy. <laughs> Every <Moose>. day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, going on that topic, you know, like how you said you haven't, or you just want to know, like, what this industry is like being like a chef and everything. I get this question often like even my students nowadays they're asking me like how do you become a private chef i'm like you start at the bottom and then i have people who graduated culinary school ask me the same question and just like kids they're Mm -hmm. like i want to be a chef i was like i don't think you know what it takes to be (laughs) like at this level like i'm not the best i'm not you know i'll never say like i'm the best but i sure am like i'm good at what i do you know Mm -hmm. but there's people that just don't think it's very hard. Mm-hmm. Like they don't see what you have to do. You know, the late nights of prepping, getting ready for events, you know, traveling back and forth. Like I go as far as like Eagle Mountain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you live in the Salt Lake area? Yeah, I live downtown. Oh, so, so you're going, woo. Yeah, you're going yeah. hour, hour opposite way. Yeah. Hour opposite way and then hour back, you know. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. When you're doing the private chef and like like doing that kind of stuff, are you cooking like three meals? for the family or is it sometimes like how does your package work when you're when you're at hiring tony as a private chef and i know it's more catered to the family but right. is it like stuff you offer is like you can do a single meal if you wanted to mm-hmm. yeah so i do like kind of a mix of a hybrid kind of scenario because mm-hmm. a lot of people they like they don't like to sit down and have lunch right they're mm-hmm. always at least my clients they're always on the go kind mm-hmm. of deal mm-hmm. so i always pack them four days worth of lunch And I just, like, mix it up. And then we do, like, breakfast, brunches, dinners, like, on whatever day works for each person, you know? Like, I can't take care of just one client all the time. I have to give, like, some time to my other client and then time to the culinary school, that kind of thing, you know? Mm. So I always do hybrid menus. If not, then I'll just do, like, packed. But I hate doing meal prep. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, like, it takes the fun out of cooking because – you don't get to see their reaction immediately to your food, you know. Mm-hmm. It's like it could sit in the fridge for like two to three days before they even get it. And so the texture, the taste, everything changes oh, about yeah. that, you know. Microwaving it, yeah. Right. Yeah. No, oh, that's it. That was so mu- true. Must be rough. Yeah. But you know, you win some, you lose some. Yeah. 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 I get to still do whatever meal preps I want. And then I still get that opportunity to get little like plated meals out where I can like really show off flair with like not only my plating, but then like flavors, all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like right out the kitchen too. And with like after, or it seems like your journey, you've been through everything from like not even being in culinary to going to culinary school and then working your way up in so many different ways, whether it's restaurant, your own business. What do you, what is like the goal now for you now that you are kind of in a place where you have a lot more free time? Yeah. Like, what is next up? You know, it might be to get out of Utah eventually, you know, mm. but as of right now, I'm like, I don't want to say comfortable, but it's mm. like I'm at a really good place in my career and like just like I enjoy what I d- I'm doing right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't see myself really mm-hmm. being in the industry for like the next. 50 years, you know, or whatever, until, like, I retire, that kind of thing. I want to just, like, do my duty, you know, cook for as long as, like, new recipe comes to my mind, new flair, whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. I just want to do it for, I don't know, five, ten more years. 
That's tight. Wow, that's a that's pretty real. Short uh, short yeah. lifespan for most chefs. Yeah. Or, so I feel like this it's just so different nowadays, right? Mm-hmm. You have your social media chefs, you have yeah. private, you have your line cooks. You like you don't even have to go to college. You don't have to go to culinary school. You can literally just post up your food, you know, like mm-hmm. you know, I post up my food for myself basically. It's mm-hmm. like a journal for myself, like mm-hmm. the interactions, whatever, you know. But yeah. The people who are like liking up my Instagram or whatever, they're they're not eating it, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like I make that food for myself, and like I make it so I can know that I can recreate it, you know. And so <clears throat> I really enjoy that aspect. Mm. And wherever like wherever it takes me, I'm trying to not stay complacent. But no, that that, that answer surprised me just because it's a very artistic way of thinking about it, like. Almost like uh, the only thing I can compare it to is like Charles Gambino, right? He makes really good music, but he always knew he's like, yeah, it's what isn't going to be forever. It doesn't mean it's not great. But, yeah. And and plus, the key thing that you said that I thought was interesting is like until the recipes stop coming. Yeah. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah, that's true. Because it's more of like how on our side is being creative, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. When is the day that we stop making a T-shirt, or when is the day we stop yeah. putting stuff out on clothing? Right? It's like yeah. that's when you know it's like okay. Time to time to mm-hmm. pack it up and find something that you do want to do because I think right now what it is too is that we're in a generation where you don't have to focus on one thing, yeah. right? You yeah. can you don't have to be complacent with life because there's so much stuff out there that mm-hmm. you can take on if you really wanted to. And there's opportunities. There's a lot of opportunities out there. Agreed. So you said you want to get out of Utah. Um, what would be your dream place or where would like any country anywhere? Where would you like to go cook? You know, for the states, I would love to go to Seattle. Mm, nice, you know? <clears throat> Utah. We don't have any bodies of water yeah. around us. Um, At least not, <laughs> not, not like that. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Right, and then we have, <clears throat> we have a horrible food culture. Like, come on, be for real. Uh, Jello salad, you know. <laughs> what the fuck? Funeral potatoes. Okay, hey, funeral, funeral potatoes, are, potatoes are good. No, I'm not, I'm not no but like you. when they made that list of top, they made that uh, list though of like every every state's like best food. Mm. Yeah, I was like, fuck, dude, that's really yeah, it. Funeral yeah. potatoes is our best thing. Yeah, yeah that was on. What's Utah's? Was, Utah's is that really what comes Utah's Utah? Like that's fry sauce. Saying. Fry sauce. Yeah, but that's not funeral potatoes. And I don't know. I know. Like dirty soda. Dirty yeah. soda. <laughs> yeah, I know. I never heard of like you can do dirty before. soda anywhere. Those like crazy <laughs> underbaked cookies. Yeah. You know, Beignets um, or whatever. No, no, no that's from uh, New that's Orleans. That's for crumble. Uh, they use uh, cake mix yeah. for their cookies, which is, I didn't know that. Really? Yeah, they do. It's crazy. Crumble sounds so I still good, get it huh? sometimes, though. <laughs> I'm I've been having sugar cravings. It's bad, bro. It's bad. I've been much better, but I'm down to tackle a freaking crumble cookie. You know how many calories in that thing? Probably like 500. No, a no, thousand, thousand, 1,200 yeah. in one whole cookie. In one yeah. whole cookie. <laughs> Share that shit, guys. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> hit uh, one piece. <laughs> but what, why? Uh, I also wanted you to kind of dive deeper in that too. Like, what can make Utah's like food scene better? You know, I feel like. Recently, I've seen a lot of, like, progression in Utah's food culture, mm-hmm. not in just, like, at Chinatown, you know. Mm. We're getting new restaurant pop-ups, that kind of thing. And then we got our H Mart. Yeah. Yep. But it's honestly just the people who cook, you know, mm-hmm. the chefs behind everything. Like, you have your restaurant staples that have been here for probably however many years, you know. And they haven't mm-hmm. changed one bit. They probably got worse. But... You know, I'm not, I don't want to call anyone out. You know, <laughs> but, I'm about to, I'm about it's like Crown Burger, <laughs> <laughs> Apollo Burger. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to call anyone out, but I just think that even like in the networking space and like mm-hmm. everything, you know, you need those people who are coming in with like a different mindset and like different goals with that kind of thing. Like, yeah, like you said about the networking thing, like they're great people, but they all do the same thing. Yeah, they so do finance. They do mortgages yeah. whatever and it's stuff that i couldn't take away so from. it's not fresh yeah yeah, yeah so it's, it's like yeah i get yeah. that and i get that because you're you in know, there and you're like i want to learn something new and then like nothing really changes right? yeah you yeah. know yeah. it was yeah. cool nothing like ever said, moves once again it's cool that they're doing something like that because yeah. it is something that when you're younger and you want to do something and you want to get in the real estate or if you want to run your own business or if you want to yeah, yeah. there are people out there and that's that's how we keep gatekeeping away it's like yeah. they now open the doors for people to go in there and learn but also i think that 
there's it's not a fresh way to take about it. You know, there's no takeaways from it that I couldn't just go get on YouTube. Yeah. You know, or just yeah. like my cousin, yeah. if I really want to learn something, I'd be like, okay, this is who I want to sit with, you know? <laughs> so, you know, it's cool. It's cool also to see the younger <laughs> crowd coming. You said you're 23 and now I got it. I had, that was the opportunity where I had a chance to meet you. Yeah. Right. So it also brings that kind of networking is like, we both stood out right. from the crowd and that's why sure. we were like, okay, you have your, what you had your homie, he does the barber stuff. Yeah. Right. And so. He and he's really killing it. I forgot his name, but he kills it on the the content side of it too. Yeah. So he does like Asian haircuts, and so he talks about that kind oh, of really? stuff. Yeah, <laughs> Asian but, haircuts. How so? Like, well, no, it's like Asian people like getting Asian, haircuts. Oh, you like know? Asian hair. Yeah. yeah. And so, but in Utah, crazy. you know, like Utah, right? Yeah, yeah. He has yeah. his. He has his like market. Yeah, really. It's like that one guy that lives <laughs> in Ohio. He's like the one Asian be guy that saving yeah, him. yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. In in Ohio, he'll be balding bro. in the middle. He just yeah. fucking combs it over. But it's like it's funny to see that kind of stuff, right? But that it's because often it's true that it happens throughout the United States. I didn't really think of it like that because we grew up like I'll have Barry and my little cousin. He yeah. cuts hair, and so he just mm. so I was. I literally like start going to a barber. So I was like 16, 17. Yeah, yeah same. So it got expensive, yeah. and I was like, I can't afford a hundred dollars a week. I don't know. Damn. My, my shit was getting bad. I was getting a haircut. Hundred dollars a week. Hundred dollars a week. That's ridiculous. My God, I was paying twenty five thirty. Yeah. yeah, my guy. And then I went to Great Clips, bucks. and that's what I was paying. Twenty five thirty. Honestly, shout us to Great Clips and Sports Clips and stuff like that because they're actually Whoa, not that bad. No free ads. Remember? remember oh, bikini. my bad. Do you guys remember? <laughs> Damn. Bi- you guys remember bikini cuts? What the hell? I, the name <laughs> sounds familiar. I don't remember that. <laughs> I had my mom take me there one time. It was horrible. Horrible. Did experience. they cut your hair in a bikini? Yeah. It was the Hooters. I was horny. What do I know? <laughs> but I was like 12. What the hell? My mom took me there, right? She come here. It was the worst haircut I've ever got in my life. But you saw some titties. Hey, man. <laughs> she probably felt uncomfortable. We, we like, had that here in Utah? Bro, it was on. It was literally right next to the Vasa on Redwood on 78. Yeah, but you know what's kind of crazy? Literally I called, imagine it. It's literally called Bikini Cuts. Yeah. I swear to God. That's crazy. Bro, yeah, it was just shorties and bikinis cutting your hair. Like, think of a Hooters. <laughs> but yeah, we, but have, the, the we have that in Oregon, but it's more yeah. like they have they run the coffee shops and stuff, so it was like drive. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, I didn't know they cut hair in this. That shit would bug me. <laughs> I'm mean, <they're> like, <laughs> this is titty trimmers. <laughs> Man, okay, he's horny. <laughs> horny. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. yeah, but you know, I think it's great what you're doing. You know, and I I really wanted to have you here on the podcast because you know it also opened up it opened up the door for anyone else that's wanting to try and get into a different lane, not necessarily cuisine or like being in the culinary yeah. world, but you don't have to be the typical doctor, right. you know, lawyer, lawyer typical. you know, because engineer. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be miserable. If you can do it, then do it. Yeah. No, absolutely. for, for 100%. sure. If you can do it, then do it. But if you want to do it, then do you it. Know, absolutely. If you have an opportunity in life to take on something that, you, you know, that you may have questions about, and, or you're scared of doing, try it out. You never know until yeah, you absolutely. fail, and you might love it at the end of the day because that's what you did. You kind of jumped <laughs> into something, and you were like, damn, I actually do enjoy this. Bro, jump shit blind, <laughs> which, which is crazy, he's like, too. He's <laughs> like, I might like this shit. Oh, I love he's it. Like, <laughs> he's like, goodbye, yeah. scalpel, high knife. <laughs> <laughs> that's tight. <laughs> okay, that was weird. Were you scared that was tight. when uh, you did that? Like, were you scared when you made that decision? I was. Yeah. You know, I held yeah. off, like, for a really long time, like, Obviously, my parents knew I was going to go to culinary school. Like, I told them. But, like, I didn't even have enough money <laughs> to oh, yeah. go. I was like, put, oh, damn. yeah. Like, I had to put some money down to go, and I literally had to borrow 100 bucks <laughs> to oh even God. get into dude. the first day. Wow, dude. Isn't yeah. that just the application yeah. itself? I think there was, like, a yeah. application. <laughs> the, appli- the, application. Like, <laughs> the application fee was pretty expensive back in the day. There was, like, a $500 application fee. This, for the Park, this is for the Park City one. Uh-huh. And then 500? it's, like, you're not even sure if you're going to like it. So, like, that – and that was also one thing that turned me off. away. Is yeah. like, damn, what if I really don't like it? What if I hate cooking? That's my that's one of makes, my biggest fears. Oh, makes you hate cooking? Is that, you know, doing something that I love – I still love – I love it to this day. But if I was put into a position where – I would fall out of love with it. I was like, right. I don't know what I would do with myself because I think eighty mm-hmm. percent of me, my personality, is because of the kitchen. Like being at peace with myself, thinking yeah. about how I, I interact with people. I do a lot of this in my head while I'm cooking. Yeah. And so I find peace where the kitchen is. Yeah. I mean, that's how I feel too. Like working for people, like working for <laughs> restaurants, working for chefs, all that kind of thing. Like 
it made me hate cooking. Yeah, yeah. like yeah, I can see that. I loved culinary school. Like my whole culinary school journey, I loved every minute of it. And then I go out, I get into the restaurant. I hated it. I hated it. Like every minute. I even when I became like the CDC, you know, I had customers coming in complaining all this kind of stuff like from my staff i had to take care of them and all that kind of stuff and Mm. so it just got like way too much yeah and being like my own chef like my own business all that kind of thing like there's nothing i trade it for now yeah yeah Yeah. especially when you become your own boss you don't have to worry about anything else but yourself and you're like okay that's where you kind of want to be at with life like this business for everyone right you want to own a business and not have to worry about it yeah. Right, and for you to be able to put yourself in a position at a very young age too, I applaud yeah. you. Yeah, because that's at 23, true. Yeah. At twenty three, a lot of people are still trying to. Uh, you live 30. on your own too, huh? You live on your own too. Yeah. Gee, he said, "Yeah, jeez, that's right. That's what that's, that's right. what that private chef money gets you." He's like, "My that's client right, is 007. <laughs> that's right, boy. That's crazy. That was. That. Do you get to? You know, Utah is is very crazy because there's a lot of money here, right? People, yeah. and that's why people are starting to move here and stuff. Mm-hmm. Somewhere, um, do you see Utah as like one of those states that there's a lot of opportunity here in being a private chef? Yeah, I definitely feel like there's a lot of opportunity, especially like in like the Park City area. Mm-hmm. Park mm-hmm. City last year, I did pro- countless events mm-hmm. in Park City yeah. with like clients Sundance coming and in, yeah. Mm. And then just like people coming in from like Miami, New York, whatever. And since it's like so small, especially like the private chef world here, you know, everyone knows each other and like you try to help out like everyone as much as you can, you know, but you still want to keep your clients. Mm -hmm. But I had a lot of good like help, a lot of good people that were like helping me like get into the world and like trying to figure everything out. Um, That's really cool. Yeah. Like shout out Landon. He's a chef. Mr. Beast that actually lives in Utah. And so he just like left Utah to go work for Mr. Beast for like two years. He comes back and he goes and works for the Utah Jazz. Oh wow. God. Yeah. What, like Mr. Beast players. giving him like 10,000 a meal? That's crazy. No, I, I don't even so know. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. But like he's like helped me throughout the journey. Like he's giving me clients here and there. Like mm-hmm. he's just, yeah. That's really cool because from an outsider's perspective, I can the culinary world, especially like private chefs, I would feel like that's super gatekeeping. More like the dog eat dog world. Yeah, right? like yeah. you're really going in there to fight yeah. and like, like fend off yourself. Mine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's true. When you're when you're people. working for yourself and you want to keep your yeah. clients, like it's hard to like want to open that up. But it's cool to hear that as well because. You know, when you look at the perspective about a chef, you think they're assholes or, you know, yeah. it's what you see on TV, right? <laughs> That's right. what they're, they're thinking. Like Gordon that. Ramsay, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, or yeah. even like there's like even the like the shows where the uh, what the judges were like yeah, yeah. critiquing the food. So you're kind of like, yeah, Man, these guys really suck. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. But it's cool to hear that because that's a different perspective on it. As especially you as a chef you get to see that perspective and then you also get to share that kind of stuff with other chefs that are coming up or yeah. wanting to figure stuff out. Yeah. And it changes the culture, too, because I feel like people that are newer to the industry, they try to be a little bit more hard-headed about things. No, for sure. And having people just kind of reach out and help you out and just kind of be Mm open-minded, I feel like it's really important. Then at least the toxicity of whatever is going on in the restaurant business, because I'm sure there are many, like it just takes away from that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. A lot of people come into the industry thinking they're the best. Which is crazy. It's crazy. Like. Sure, you're pretty good at cooking, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, you like I always thought about it. Like every new restaurant I went to, like even if I hated it, I like try to learn as much as I can from mm-hmm. whatever the mm-hmm. chef has to give. You know, like they have so many years of experience on me. Yeah. Like nowadays, I just try to learn on my own, and mm-hmm. then I also try to learn from like my mom before she yeah. can like eat, like before she stops cooking everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you go to a restaurant and like try things out and like you're sitting there and do you like base things off atmosphere, service, all this kind of stuff? No, I wouldn't call myself like a restaurateur. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) I I just like, I'm a foodie. Mm -hmm. I hate the term, but. Yeah, we hate it too. I like, (laughs) I like going to restaurants. Hey, foodie fam. No, no. Stop, foodie fam. I'm fucking tired of hearing that shit. Have you met that guy? 
No. So it's funny. I don't know any of them, but I know a lot of back stuff behind a lot of the foodie people. Yeah. Like how a lot of them are not from Utah and stuff. And yeah. like they kind of came in and like took over. Yeah. And so it's hard for people that are in the food scene from Utah to try and get in. But it's because they're so they're too cool for everyone. It's crazy. How are you too cool? When that's the intro to hey, all foodie your, fam. Well, I got another one for you, foodie fam. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm not. No hate to anyone, of <laughs> no course. No hate. But I just <laughs> it's as you know, like I'll have family in the restaurant business, so you, I, I would go to the restaurant and like you would see these people, and I'm like, man, this is kind of weird. I, was like, I could be off. doing the, I could be doing the same thing you're doing too, because there a lot of them are like talking shit, and then right yeah. when that camera turns on, they're just like, boom. It's like well, they, the whole persona yeah. like activates and like it's like okay, you, so you're selling. I get it. You're selling this whatever this entity is. Uh-huh. But <laughs> if you're really going to be trying this food, you better really like this food. They're, sometimes they yeah. just do it for the money, mm-hmm. and they may not even like the food. And people go try it, and they're like, "Wow, this isn't foodie fam yeah. standard." There was a <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Like, that was not foodie. I, fam I like try to I try to tune that out. But like it actually, I probably hear that almost every fucking day. Really, I don't hear it that often. Food I feel fam. like I just see it on my feed. I have sometimes. it blocked every once in a while for me. <laughs> but that's <laughs> like that's a scary every thing week, with maybe. like uh, social media influencers, especially like fo- I guess food influencers, right? Yeah. It just like I knew it was bound to happen, but it's to a point now where people are just doing it to kind yeah. of get clout and fo- like it followers. Is, it is drowning out, out what drought. the actual you know what the actual takes are on food now. Yeah, like, it's kind of sad. I can't trust anything that they're posting online anymore because everyone exactly. thinks everything's good and you go try it and you're like, this is ass. Oh, dude. I'm about <laughs> to do I'm ass. about to do a segment where I go try shit and be like, this is ass the whole time. <laughs> you lied. You lied. Yeah, call, call them like, out. Call yeah, out. There yeah, we yeah. Go. Yeah. You said this shit was good. This shit is ass. <laughs> like, turns out you get more sponsors that way. So, <laughs> hey, hey, you get more you're getting more, business regardless. You yeah. get more They want to yeah. find out if it's ass or good. Hey, you and get more love on hate. That's the that's the shitty thing about life right now. Is it's that, it's not longevity though. Yeah, yeah. But fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've had those like foodies hit me up. Mm-hmm. They're like, cook for me for free. I said, no. mm-hmm. what the fuck? You wanna pay? Yeah, I was like, I don't care about. That's your what they do though. You it's know? so crazy. Yeah. You and your two thousand free content. Yeah, you and your two thousand followers because you post food every day thinks you make makes things get free. Yeah. Like I yeah. even if I was doing the food content stuff, I would still pay. 100%. Because that's like how I look at it. It's like, you know, I go I wanna eat good food, I'm gonna pay for good food. I don't care what people think of it. I want this is my perspective, this is how I'm gonna take yeah, my God. takes on it. But for you for the fact that you would pay get paid to say that the food is good, mm-hmm. it takes away from the like genuine take of food. Yeah. It's like going to, like, for example, like omakase, right? You're not just going to get it free. Like, a lot of the guys that make those videos, they pay for that whole meal experience, mm-hmm. then make the video after. There's nothing wrong with the actual making of, like, food content, I feel like. But I think it's like people just took it too far and just... Yeah. You it's know. just, you don't know anymore. Money grabs. Yeah, money grabs. Everywhere. Fuck, I fucked up. I wish I wasn't the way I am. Fuck, and I'd be out Why? there fucking selling my soul for these foods. <laughs> <laughs> you wish you could go have standards? Yeah, standards. You're They're right. not letting me in a restaurant for sure. That's how I Whatever, you get in all the restaurants. You're going to have no problem. I guess. Um, but so, you, we okay, we didn't discuss the food takes where you, the stuff you disliked in Utah, but what are some restaurants that you go to and be like, yeah, this is a good restaurant? For sure, my number one would have to be HSL. Okay. HSL. I love that place. Like I've been HSL? I don't some... think I'm familiar. So that one's going to be near downtown. It's kind yeah. of on like the other side of the university. Like oh, okay. Right? So I love their food. They're HSL. like considered new American, but they've been consistent for probably like four years. I've been going there for four years. Oh, mm-hmm. shit. Yeah. And so they're like new American fine dining, but with like big portions. Yeah. Oh, big portions. You've been yeah, there, Tate? Yeah. No, mm. I don't go up that far. <laughs> yeah, when you said by no, the but I, 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 I see on the I see people's HSL, videos. <laughs> yeah. HSL, I've never been either. Yeah. HSL is good, you know. We should bleep this out. No free ads. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, I want. I mean, HSL. If they listen. This to is this. different. This is not. We don't want to keep stuff in here in Utah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, like, Crown Burger has the best onion rings. Is it really? Ooh, mm. that's a hot take. Because some people think they're trash. I love them. 
Okay, they're onion rings are really good. <laughs> the Just burgers. Onion rings. No, like people don't like the onion rings. I like, like onion rings. I, I'm like, I love the onion rings. I hate the habits love, onion I love, rings. I love onion rings yeah. in general. I habits and onion rings suck. Yeah. What in there? All right. All right. <laughs> it's a little one piece. What came out? <laughs> All right, where's the door? I'm leaving. <laughs> He's like, no. uh, onion wings are great. And I was like, oh, it sucks. He's like, habit's not that good. It used to be a lot better. The burger, the is burgers are fine. Fine. Yeah. I, I, bro, I've been craving in and out so bad. Just go. Yeah. yeah. Dude, you were trying to get it last week when oh, you were bro. fucking on, fa- on Instagram. Like, <laughs> oh, why yeah. don't they have one downtown? <laughs> like, why uh, don't you guys have one downtown? I'm, I'm like, bitch, you don't even live downtown. But I was down there, <laughs> but they don't close until like one. But I don't want to drive away from downtown to go back to downtown. Mm-hmm. That's the problem I'm having. And just get it the next day. <laughs> I, it's funny because I'm, tr- I'm trying to give in and out a chance. Oh, my God. Like, I'm sorry. Oh, you're really one of them. No, like He's no, I just don't really like the burger. I get it. I get why people like it. It's a good cheap burger, and that's why affordable. people get it. it's affordable. Affordable, affordable burger. But like, if you're, if you're trying to say it's the best burger out oh, there, no no, 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 it's definitely not. Shake Shack got some beat on flavor. I feel. I'm like. not gonna lie. Carlos Jr. has a really good burger, bro. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. Yes. Fast food. Famous star, bro. That's that's it, bro. Their fries. <laughs> their their, their, their fries, fries are good. Yeah, their like fries the are fries? good. Yeah, I like their the, huh. the fact burger, that you get that burger or Crisco also has good burgers, bro. Sometimes, yeah, I guess so they got trash every because sometimes, yeah. sometimes when you get their burger, it comes go, out cold. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, fuck, <clears throat> this burger is not that good. But when it's come out yeah. when hot, then you're like, okay, yeah. you know, this no, is pretty nothing wrong with there. nothing wrong with Big Mac. But yeah, I mean, uh, no, 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 no. Quarter no. pounder is kind of where it's at. Really, I like yeah. Big Macs. Yeah. Quarter, like quarter pounder, yeah, quarter pounder, or uh, I still fight for the fish fillet, but it's like 30, 70 percent chance of it being good. Which 30% I don't even chance. try that fish fillet. I don't yeah. even want to bother. It's just the shitty side of me. He's a gay fish. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't fish fillet. The joke. <laughs> I'm the voice of a generation. <laughs> that episode's crazy, bro. Um. So okay, onion rings from Crown Burger, HSL. Where, where's a good Asian spot that you like? You have a tendency Ooh, to go to. He doesn't. He's like my mom's house. That's it. He said not even you my mom's house. Okay. He said not even my house. In my opinion. Jade's Corner Deli has the best pho yeah. really? in wow. Utah. Jade's really? Out of every single pho place. I've tried them, basically all of them. Uh-huh. Like, I'm not going to tell you. Know, their pho is so huh? clean. It's so, so good. So clean. I haven't Fresh had clean. it in a while. Yeah. I'll have to try it again to get it. But yeah, a lot of stuff that nice. Jade's does is the is pretty good. They have that. Right. What is that? They have this like noodle Never dish. Um, bun bell. Oh, yeah. The bun bell. Dude, it's so good. Yeah. It's so good with the, with the crispy pork. I'm about to, to try them out. I like yeah. that, but like, honestly, like I know I'm whenever my, I go out to a Viet restaurant when I'm like hungover or something, you know, I'm not gonna sit there and cook a bowl of pho. Yeah, yeah. I'm ten out of ten like disappointed. Yeah, like hmm. I can't, dude. On, I, honestly, over the last few years, since there's been so many pho restaurants popping up, I've been trying like a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Every single one has lost its touch. Yeah. I used to go to Pho Thirty Three when they were in Midvale. Yeah, change owners. Mm-hmm. Oh, Different. they did. Yeah. And then I haven't pho, been since. So the one, I was gonna say. so I used to only go to Pho Bin Hoa on Forty First and Redwood. Yeah, yeah. yeah, fire used to be so good. It was great. It used to be so change owners. The one, wait, but the one on ninety. Oh, there's one on ninety. Yeah, but the one right here in Forty First, mm, right uh, next to Nickelcade. Yeah. Oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So I used to go there all the time. That's the only Pho restaurant I would go to. Uh-huh. And then like I'm on my constant journey now because like make Pho is expensive. Like yeah. you better oh, make yeah, you a. I make own, a lot though yeah, when right. I make it. Yeah, yeah. But for you to put in that amount of work and money to make good pho, you're like, fuck, I might as well get a bowl pho for pho, $20. Yeah, a fucking fraction of the price. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. $20, oh my God, you're crazy. I mean, that's just better it, oxtail pho. But you're, t- you're tipping the damn, damn place. I know, but that's why I asked my mom. Like, drink. The only one I go to now, <laughs> like if I, I go to, what, a pho Hong Chao on fucking uh, Chinatown. It's owned by, it's like, it's a Chinese owned Viet restaurant. Mm-hmm. So I go there. Pretty solid. Yeah, yeah. solid, solid. You'll get because right, they have also a selection that you can choose your four meat. So you get the dakbiet. Oh, really? But I, like I don't want tripe. For dak right. Bia. And so you don't like tripe? No. Oh, I'll give it to Amy. But uh, if I, if, you know, they have to weigh it, and I don't want the tripe to outweigh the meat that I'm getting. Mm. And so you get to <laughs> choose. <laughs> you get to choose though. That makes sense. That makes sense. So that's the one thing I do take out. I'm so I get the tendon, now. I get the, uh, the meatball, I get the brisket, brisket yeah, and I yeah. get the raw meat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so I think there's pretty cool that they offer that. Um, we're having a pho Saigon in Midville. Oh yeah, okay. uh, on on steak. that one's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, and that's I, where you get cheap yeah. pho though. It's like 
still ten dollars. Uh huh. Their pho, the pho dog beer large is still ten dollars. Large is ten dollars. Oh, yeah. For the dog beer? No, it is not. Yeah. I thought it was like twelve. Twelve thirteen. Okay, twelve dollars, yeah, yeah. but fifteen dollars yeah. everywhere I, else. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, I feel like if you go out for pho, if you've had homemade pho, especially like homemade pho from a Vietnamese family, I'm like, I swear to God, when it comes from a Vietnamese family, it's way different. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, it changed. It changed, right? Yeah, for so sure. So clean, changed, right? It's clean. changed my whole it's perspective like, I, on how pho is. Yeah. I just, it's like settling for like a fast food. Because it should be oily sometimes. Yeah. And I just know oily. the traditional Viet pho is clean as hell. Yeah. It's clean, but the, yeah. pa- like the, the, the flavors is fucking boom, right? Yeah. But then when you go to a restaurant, it's good. Yeah, you know. <laughs> he said it's, it's good. good. <laughs> it's better than instant, you know. I mean, 100%. I won't lie to you. Like two days ago, I had probably my second worst pho. Really? Ever. Where? Second worst? Where? Hold on. Let me uh, censor you off. Pearl. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! We heard. No, that. you can. <laughs> the pearl does not make good pho. No. No. It's because no. it's they're catering to a different right. audience. Yeah, like, a lot of their sure. food, a lot of their food, I because when I tried it, I was like, it, Oh man, this is, the pearl so is it's like, like an Asian bar. fusion. Yeah, yeah. it's Asian fusion. But bar. they do like brunch, they do like all this yeah. other stuff. But oh, they bring brunch? Them. Yeah, they're family. And so sure. like <laughs> I've had the opportunity to eat there. I it's I, okay. I have my food takes. It's okay, yeah, but yeah. the pho is not good. Pho is not good. Oh. Yeah, there was a I had their spring rolls were, were pretty decent. There's you can't fuck up spring rolls. No, no. I like those are spring rolls is like one the of those things you can't fuck up. Decent. It's like you have you been in you and I kitchen on Reward? You and I actually uh, you and I was pretty good when I, it first opened yeah. up, but now they're not. Really? I yeah. like them. They've like kind of fell. The the one over in Fort Union or uh sorry, uh Cottonwood Heights is not mm. bad. That one's way better than the Redwood one. I'm on my bun me journey, so I've been trying out bun me from everywhere. Bun me, bro. The the long and on fucking seventy eighth on seventy second, right there by Nate Uh huh. Yeah. Right now, because they make everything in house, so their pate, God, the Vietnamese stop. mayo, really? everything, dude. That I'm getting so hungry. so good. So I, all it's so foods. good. I've been going there like once a week because I okay because like w- w- there was a place right here in Forty First, the the market, yeah, um, f- fucking trash. Everything there expired, but they made a really good bun mi because <laughs> their bread was so good, right? Yeah, and they changed the fucking recipe. Oh my gosh, and that's the one thing I hate. Like, well, <laughs> I haven't went out for bun me because my mom, she goes through these phases where she gets a kick out of making something for like a year. This year has been bun me. Mm. Like, so I, she's just like, she makes me like five to take home and I just eat them for lunch like every day. So I haven't actually had That's nice. like, takeout. <laughs> it's awesome. Actually. Yeah. yeah. My, my mom loves cooking, especially since all the kids are out of the house. She looks for excuses mm. to cook us. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. No. Amazing. My mom's Thank calling you, mom. me to ask me what I'm making <laughs> for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you're the good cook. No, yeah, so I'm about to start. We should actually start our off-the-menu uh, food stuff where we're going to try things. Because they're th- who's that? Uh, fucking SLC. Yeah. He's out there doing his ranking right now, but he's kind of not. He hasn't been doing his ranking. He slowed down right. a little On the bun yeah. because I was like, okay, yeah. cool. He did like four of them, and I was like, all right. I was like, that was actually a tight series. Yeah. Like, so, for sure. I think that, no, it's cool that he's yeah, out there trying this stuff and then um, like doing the fall ratings, doing all this stuff, because he's doing a lot of stuff that he's trying to introduce all these restaurants to a different demographic. While also honing in on the people that deserve to be in these rankings. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. A hundred percent. I think it's nice to even remind the people that are from Utah. It's like, oh, these restaurants too. Cause we kind of get in our habits and going to the same places, especially if it's something fast and easy to eat, mm-hmm. but there's so many different good places too. So I like that. He was kind of just reminding me, I was like, oh, this place has good stuff. Yeah. This place has good stuff. I don't know if you guys know, but there's a $50 pho, bowl of pho here in Utah. Here. Big Cottonwood Heights. I don't remember the name. Post Malone Cottonwood has eight there. Of course he has. But, you know, I don't know if I'm willing to go spend that kind of money on a bowl of pho. Oh, uh, you know what? I what thought the same g- thing. What but does I, it give you, though? But I went to Toyota Bay's restaurant, mm-hmm. and I had her $65 bowl of pho. Right. And I was like, I was pissed. Yeah. I ate it first. I was like, why the fuck would I do this? I was getting mad in the restaurant. Mm. And then he he's like, oh, you're eating it wrong. And then he's like... He showed he, he the bone marrow is right in front of me. Yeah, yeah. He, he scoops the whole bone marrow inside the pho. Boom, worth sixty five dollars. Oh my god! <laughs> I love bone marrow too. Yeah. So yeah. I get that. But uh, but you know when, without Ooh. the fat, you're like, what the hell am I eating? Like it just tastes like water, if anything. And then when you throw that fucking bone marrow in, I guess the bone marrow is like cooked over like twelve say. hours, like on like like a hundred degree temp. And I was like, okay, okay, I get it. Sixty five dollars. Yeah, cool. Tweta Bay just out of nowhere became just like a celebrity chef. 
Yeah, but she's different. Like I trust her. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, I can't trust 100%. a Vietnamese restaurant here in Big Cottonwood Heights. Yeah, that's gonna charge someone fifty bucks. What was in it though? It's just normal pho. Just normal pho? Okay. Oh, it's just regular tacos. Okay. Oh. Fine, fine. They said Wagyu, whatever. Oh, bullshit. I don't believe any bullshit. of that anyway, so it don't matter. Yeah, anytime yeah. anytime someone says, like, an uh, expensive bowl of pho has, like, Wagyu in it, I'm like, it's not A5. It's not. It's probably just Australian or something, and that's mm-hmm. probably where they're marking up their prices. Right. That, like, six yeah. slices of fucking Australian Wagyu, you're like, what the hell did I just pay for? Right. Yeah, if you don't have any bar- bone marrow in it, if you don't have, like, a giant piece of dinosaur yeah. meat on it like yeah. don't even try and the most i've ever paid for pho, or for pho was like 35 bucks in vegas because they had that humongous like rib thing on it I forgot what it's called the big short rib one right yep. mm-hmm. yeah, yeah 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 okay even in seattle they have a really good one we i forgot what it's called but we uh went up there for a bachelor and then they were like you know everyone's hung over let's go eat pho they already had it the day before and they thought it was so good they went back the next day when i showed up and then we pulled up they're already almost sold out. This is 10 a.m. Oh, yeah. They're oh, almost sold shit. out of pho. I'm like, wait, what the hell? They already sold out of the boom away, and that's the one thing that people really go there for. Holy hell. And this was 10 a.m., and I was like, there's no way you guys are sold out. They open at like 7 because, you know, a traditional ways of eating pho, you eat it for breakfast. Right. Uh-huh. Right. And yeah. so they kind of yeah. they kind of like incorporate how their tradition is and then still introduce that into the American that's culture. crazy. I mean, all Vietnamese noodle soups you eat for breakfast. Yeah. Really? I mean... Hmm. Yeah, you just wake up in the morning. You walk out on the street. And you get whatever. Yeah, that's fucking, <laughs> that's, that's that's Matt so right now. Sick. Yep. My cousin's out there. Oh, he's every gone. day he's been yeah. s- snapping me. Yep. Freaking bun me at three a.m. I'm like, motherfucker. I was like, <laughs> I've, I'm like the one thing. He's like, you want any souvenirs? I'm like, just bring me back a bun me. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> just bring you back a bun me. Just fucking wrap that shit up and bring me back a bun me. That's oh. all. Now I can say I tried it. Vietnamese yeah. coffee from Vietnam. Just every morning. Is it just coffee every there? Morning. What? because <laughs> 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 so, so i make fun of amy but she's like <laughs> we talk about chinese broccoli uh-huh. and then gai long is just broccoli so it's not chinese broccoli how we oh, would say yeah, it so broccoli. do you just call it coffee there or do you call it vietnamese <laughs> coffee can i get vietnamese coffee like what the what fuck, the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> okay i guess well, um do you have like a top three of like viet food yeah what is your top three my top is gonna be bong bo wei mm. it's gonna be ban seo Okay. Yep. And then I would let's see. I think it's gonna be probably bum tat nung. Mm. What's that? that bum tat nung is the is the dish with the pork and the egg roll and stuff. Mm. And it's like a it's like a it with pretty the much noodle salad. all the rice yeah. noodles. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, okay. that's why with the fish sauce. Bum tat yeah. yeah. But I'll take. <laughs> I hate gum tam. Oh really? What's that? It. Okay. I only know the my pictures. It's the broken rice with like yeah. the pork chop and like that piece of like meatloaf and all that kind of oh, stuff. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm. Just, I don't really like the broken rice, but I don't right. mind the pork chop. What the is pork chop rice. Was, <laughs> it's the, just broken rice. It's yeah. literally rice that's broken. <laughs> yeah. What? I don't. Know I don't, I don't what know. What it, you want me to dance? I for just you? know the picture. <laughs> 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 yeah, dance for what? <laughs> but no. Okay, Vietnamese hot takes then. What are your three least favorite dishes? Kom tam. Mm-hmm. Hu tiu. Really? Really? People love hu tiu. I, I don't know what that is. You guys got to explain. I don't know the yeah. pictures. Uh, can I get B6? <laughs> <laughs> I think that might be it. Okay. What was okay. the wait, second wait, one? Wait. Hold on. Um, got call. Really? Yeah. Okay. Got a call. <laughs> <laughs> He's like Laos translated. Yeah. Yeah. Itchy neck, man. I got that too, man. Damn. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay. I mean, I'm really not a fan of like any like the caramelized like t- like the tuk call, gak call, yeah, that yeah. kind of thing. I feel like it's just it's too savory for mm-hmm. too long. Like yeah. if I eat it, I'm gonna get sick of it. That is true because I don't like dong kem. Mm, that's yeah. like that's like the bottom. It of is mine. very, it's very right. savory. Yeah. You know, it you guys, would, but I love them. Is a lot sweeter than like yeah. our tuk nung. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. If it would I make it so, that's why I don't like it. It's because I don't had, like how sweet it is. If they had like that soft yolk for all the eggs, I would be all for it right. all the time. But usually, like traditionally, lobby was like fully cooked egg. Yeah, yeah. No. overcooked. I love yeah, it. Overcooked. I love it anyway. But you I eat. can never get down with it. I love that shit. My mom would give me so much shit when we have. She's like, "You don't want egg, huh?" And I'm just like, "No, I'm the only kid that didn't like the eggs." Loser. 
I was like, I'm pretty sure somebody was freaking uh loser. Person. I just wanted the pork, dude. The pork's so good. <laughs> eggs are good for you, man. I know. I don't like hard boiled Still, eggs. Still, it's good for you, man. I know. Just give me a fucking sunny side egg, then. Why can't you do that? Well, you can't do that in the thing that mm. you're asking for. Well, you can. But yeah. you, you cook it separately. You can do whatever you want. I, I mean, the sure. jammy egg is really hard the to jammy. do. Yeah. It, it, it would be really hard to do in that. You have to do it like completely separate right. with the, the same egg. components. <laughs> what the fuck? It's like, you know, the ramen egg kind of ah. texture. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I do that with my Boldak spicy ramen noodles. Boldak. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not that hard then. Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how do you do it? What do you mean? Like you make it yourself? Yeah. How, what do you do? I mean, I just, t- I, mean, that, I mean, I don't <laughs> time it correctly. I guess you could say it's <laughs> Jeez, man. I thought you had a whole process. I was no. getting excited. I mean, it just, yeah, I just cook it right around the time. What is a one meal that you can cook that you would introduce to a shorty? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a great question, actually. Oh, God. It's like the only way she, she would fall in love with you was this one meal. Uh, Girls uh, like it when you can cook. Yeah. Like, it's just, a, it's good. What's crazy to say is I feel like it would be... Oh, I don't like this. It'd probably be like some stir fry, bro. Honestly, okay. What kind of stir, stir fry, fry beef? Stir fry beef can't go yeah. wrong. That's what I prep yeah. every week. I would do that, some napa cabbage, oh, some do beef, some rice. Yeah, do something easy. I wouldn't go crazy. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you know, breakfast obviously easy. Eggs, you know, if we do rice, we do rice. If we do toast, we do toast. Whatever, you know, <laughs> you Asian or you white? I don't know. How you feel in the morning? Yeah, yeah. You, know what I'm you wake up. Uh, yeah, yeah. You wake up a little dicky. You wake up a Chris Brown. <laughs> yeah, you know. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it escalated so fast. What? Nothing escalated. Nothing. No, you were just, just like. Because <laughs> yeah. the whole time I was thinking, I was like, he said toast because he's envisioning a white girl. <laughs> ah. Good job, buddy. Yeah. Ah. yeah. <laughs> That's what I was thinking about. Yeah, yeah he was okay. right. No, 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 Tay was. Oh, my God. What? <laughs> I didn't go that far. I know he didn't. Uh, no, no, my mind is very slow. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. I'm hungry. Yeah, we know you are. God, there's uh, <laughs> do we, we we need we need to have an opportunity for you to cook for us. How much does that cost? We can talk about off air actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we yeah, don't yeah. want to give the. Dude, uh, I, can't, I can't tell you on air. You know? yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, he's like, this is the discount. I'm like, it's <laughs> <laughs> <This is, laughs> like, damn it, I went and fish too. That's an extra price tag. <laughs> God damn it. Oh man, yeah, dude, I love I love where Utah's scene is going you know, as far as like you know the culinary differences that we're starting to get. There's a lot of stuff being introduced here. I like I like the fact that we're getting a lot of Asian food, so yeah. it's cool and it's also cool to sit with you and get to discuss this kind of stuff that's happening in Utah because you've had a training in it and so you've got this being the the forefront of where Utah cuisine gets to be and for you, the fact that you have an opportunity to kind of introduce a lot of that stuff with. More so now, more a lot of stuff happening in Utah is more fusion based now, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's why you're seeing a lot of stuff at food halls, like yeah. you can go get, you yeah. know, you can like that drunken kitchen. You can go there and get Taiwanese, Damn. you know, beef soup. <laughs> she was good. For real, drunken kitchen was pretty good. Have you tried it? You didn't like it? Yeah. <laughs> good. <laughs> they, they, honestly, good. that's my reaction to everything now. It's pretty good. It's like it's good. I just like the because he did made the dough for like all of it, and that dough he that he makes is so yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's too doughy. I mean, I like that though. Yeah, you I'm, don't really like doughy noodles. Though. Yeah, you don't like yeah Mm-mm. like udon, kapi yeah. yeah. I I hate kapi accent. I don't really, really? like udon. I hate kapi accent. <laughs> love kapi. I know. I love, <laughs> like that's the thing. We always gonna give him shit because all of us love it. Everybody, uh, every single I, I one of us. I don't. I don't know. I could eat kapi cow more than I could eat kapi accent. Okay, my kapiak count versus your best kapiak scent you've ever tried. Ooh. Damn kapi- um, Oh, that's a tough one, man. Taste kapi- that's see, that's crazy that's that you would think that's one. even tough to Yeah, because yours is really good though. Like I'm just saying. It is. It's really good. There was something it's like You need it, to make it again, bro. Yeah, bro, you gotta make that shit. It's again. fall's coming, Come man. Come yeah, on. get sick now, make it. <laughs> whoa, whoa. That's the only time oh <laughs> I made it for meal prep once. Actually, Amy. You know what's really good about your kapiak? Uh, cow and then my like the best cuppy accent that I had. It's like it's thicker. I like it when it's thicker, more it's of a porridge weird. base. Right. Yeah, a porridge base yeah. and it has just uh, the flavor. I can't even describe it. Just Egg, very, yeah. very, mm-hmm. very good. Um, with it being said, I want to say uh, we you asked you said your favorite cuisine was Italian, right? Yeah. But what are your favorite dishes to like make? Yeah, we actually haven't yeah. talked oh, about yeah, Italian. from that cuisine <laughs> yeah. or like just in general. Your favorite dishes to make in general. <sighs> I'm gonna say risotto. Yeah, it risotto took me two years. Two years to master it. Yeah. Like to 
to wear every time. Like I know how long it takes to get it from point A to point like the end of it, right? Mm-hmm. And usually that's like my stunner. Like, yeah, I'll bring that out. I'll put some crazy flavors okay. in it. Mm-hmm. Like I do like an elote mm. or oh, scallop yeah. risotto. I did a miso butternut squash risotto with <laughs> lobster. It's just like I'm just dying. I'll just throw it. <laughs> I'll, throw, <laughs> I'm just dying. I'll throw whatever in a risotto. Yeah. Death row like, right there. <laughs> I love that. And then honestly, like I love homemade pasta. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if you were to ask me if I would make homemade pasta all the time, I would say no because I feel like a good quality like packaged pasta is better than a homemade pasta. Yeah. Oh, wow. No, and it's true. Yeah. Because, okay, really? A lot of people mm. will take that take, but then like- What do you mean? A lot like, of, so like the work and amount, the process that you have to go through to make even a decent pasta noodle- It's yeah. very You hard. can literally oh. go buy one at the store. Okay, okay. You, you know, can get really good ones. You can, no, nowadays yeah. you can really. But you just enjoy making it. I enjoy making it, you yeah. know, like- okay. mm. It's also just a stunner dish. Yeah. You know? yeah. You just be like, I, know I how can to make, make pasta. pasta. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shorty pasta. looks good. <laughs> That's how I feel when I make cup accent. Because <laughs> my people hate <laughs> people hate making the noodles because you have to make it with hot water. Yeah, so you yes. have to go in there and knead yeah. it and you got to get it cut perfectly. You got to do all that stuff. I made it for the first time in my life, like last month. Yeah. First yeah. time? First time. And my, so my sister just called me. She goes, Hey, I'm making cup accent. Can you make the scent? <laughs> so I was like, what the make the scent? And I'm sitting there like, I don't even know how to make this. I've never made this in my life. Yeah. And I went over there and just started making it. Huh. And I was like, oh, okay. That was that easy. Yeah. I'm but also, I thought you already did it before. That's no, why, dude. That's why. Because I, I don't like it. Yeah. So I'm not going to waste my time trying to make it. You something make I don't a lot like. of things you don't like. Yeah, that's true. And you, I don't you, like brisket. You make a lot of things that might like kill chicken. you, too. I don't, yeah. You don't like brisket? Is that what I heard? Wait, wait, I don't like American brisket. First of all, yeah, American brisket. I dislike like a barbecue oh, you, brisket. Yeah, I don't like. I just like crazy. I just oh, like a barbecue brisket. You probably haven't had good barbecue brisket then. I've you had like barbecue good barbecue ribs? brisket. I love barbecue ribs. Beef ribs, yes, but not brisket. No, why? I don't. Like I think brisket. texturally they're just different. Just for the way me, it's cut up too. For me, the bark oh, and like the bite off of, of off of like a short rib, yeah. is so much more different than you can get on a flavor palette of of brisket because of the fat content. There are two oh. different sides of the world when it yeah. comes to like fat content. And I think yeah. that's what differentiates because I've smoked both. Right. And also the time that you put into a short reverse you put into a brisket is like, fuck, I just yeah. made a brisket for True. a third of the time. Yeah. Right. And so I, I think I, I would take the short rib. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. I, 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 think I think it's, it's think also it's, because uh, I have the process, you know, I'm not mm-hmm. just going out and just trying everywhere and be like, oh, this shit sucks. It's more so that I've been behind the scenes. I respect what they do, but. I'm not paying that much for a brisket when I can go get a whole brisket for the same price and yeah. smoke it myself. That's right. I just think American barbecue brisket, like when I went to uh, Austin, we had really good. Yeah, brisket. we have to go try that Laos one. Yeah. I'm down to do that. Yeah, I just yeah, have yet to really try good. like a crazy fire barbecue yeah. brisket. Yeah, which I know makes sense. All, I didn't either, so I went there. I'm used to yeah. our brisket, which is so it's Which so I think good. is better. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you thin slice. Yeah, it, exactly. Fully cooked yeah. brisket. Yeah. Y'all are talking about that brisket, right? No. What is it? Okay. Never mind then. Fully cooked brisket. No, nah, because like whenever I go to like Laos parties or whatever, like the auntie would just cook up the, like the storm, you know. She yeah. put on like the ribs that aren't like really slow cooked. They're just kind of. It's grilled. Yeah, like, or it's oven, grilled yeah. or fried, whatever, yeah. you know, uh-huh. and then just like a well done steak. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, you yeah. at the wrong Laos party. If, if, if you're at a real Laos party, there's yeah. no such thing as well, well done, done steak. Yeah. Why the shit is bloody. Uh, bloody yeah. Oh, it's mean, either either it's rare on one side, medium rare on the other side. Yeah. All right. I guess. So, <laughs> because I was, that's, I'm that's not the brisket we're talking it. about, yes, but we so we do make it a little different in our side of the family yeah. for sure. Like on my my little secret recipe, nobody is able to mimic it because of the one ingredient that I do add into it. It's like the tears of children. Yeah, <laughs> not today, Diddy. Yeah, not today, Diddy. <laughs> The diddler strikes again. <laughs> <laughs> the lubricator. Um, but no, this yeah, because you know, tears. and also like a loud brisket <clears throat> is not good without the gel zone. Yeah, true. You know, it's not good without the. Gel, I mean, it, it yeah. is, but it isn't. Yeah, yeah, it's like then you then it's comparable <laughs> it to almost thing. American because yeah. like you eat American uh-huh. brisket is like it's not as good without the barbecue sauce, right? Uh-huh. And so you, it's kind of the same, same world, thing, yeah. right? So that's how I have to look at it. I would choose a, a loud brisket over American brisket any day, unless I make a loud. Smoke well, brisket. If we're yeah. choosing, yeah, I would choose a, a loud brisket. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. For sure. Easy and then money. chicken wings out the window. Uh, like loud chicken wings, yeah, gone. What? 
I don't. <laughs> I make it so okay. You as a chef, you get to cook and do all this stuff for people. Yeah, uh, there has to be He's some like, things that you won't make for yourself, okay. right? Because you make it so often. Summer comes around when April loud New Year hits. What are we doing? Barbecue. Okay, what are we barbecuing? Chicken wings and brisket. Yeah. Who was doing it? Tay's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we used to do it together whenever we would be at a random party where you had to grow. Up, yeah, but now that here. we had our own house, and yep. we've, I've had to. Oh, you cook for literally everybody. Yeah, I cook for like 40 people every I'll week. Super Bowl party. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Says, Anything true. we can do to get together, I'll cook. And so it's brisket and chicken. I Easy. hate it so much. Are you talking about the. That's kind of hard Grilled chicken? Yeah. So we really? do a, we do oyster sauce grilled chicken, but also okay. do a chassis, uh chicken wing. Well, I haven't had those ones. Mm, see. These ones, the ones I've been like I've been eating like ever since I grown up is like fried in like this special batter. Like oh, I can't get that's over the Thai it. one. Mm, that's really? more so it's the kind Thai. of the airier. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I can't get over it. Yeah. Like so every nice time it's there, crunch. I'm there. Yeah, that's yeah. the Thai one for sure. The only yeah. thing is like when my we're makes, like my mom makes those mean ones. Yeah. When it gets cold, it's so bad. But when it's hot, it's so good. Yeah, when they, yeah, yeah. You, when you have to microwave them, it ruins mm-hmm. like the yeah. crunch to it. Yeah, that's yeah. the only downside. Because loud New Year, we're out like outside at the temple doing all sorts of stuff, <laughs> and that that's like <laughs> and that's. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he kind of was sounding a little uh, Hindu over there at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, I love Hindu. <laughs> <laughs> this is our longest episode ever. Okay, no, man? we're almost there. We're trying to beat it now at this point. No, it's cool. I'm enjoying the ride. Yeah, we're at this point. We're just kind of drunk Damn, on how the fumes, long? man. <laughs> two sixteen is our longest. I think we're really? at two. Oh, two hours already. Okay. That's what happens when we talk about food, though. We can go. Yes, for I, mean, I feel like you can talk about food like all day it's, because everyone has a different opinion on it, uh-huh. right? Yeah. yeah, and it could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing. It's, there are it's two things, in, but there are two things in life that are so universal: it's music and food. Yeah, and the, you know, the, without that, you cannot That's bring culture. together <laughs> cultures. Yeah. That right? right there is culture. Yeah, you gotta make put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> that is culture. <laughs> Uncle just looking ass. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That is what's culture. happening at a loud party. Loud music, karaoke, <laughs> and food. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But that's not every party, though. Yeah, but, right? What's so. happening in a Mexican or, you know, any Sudanese, I any mean, type of party? I, I've been to parties music, where... food. Uh, I've been to American parties where there's not good food. Or well, that's food. okay. That's American. Yeah. That's yeah. American. Well, I mean, we're well, American. I mean, that's what like, I mean. Mormon weddings? Like, we grew up with all that I don't stuff, want dirty uh, soda or damn cookie. I got a churro every white Mormon Americans. wedding I've ever been yeah. to. Let's yeah. say white Americans. Yeah. We're Americans, you know. No disrespect, but that's just, you know, you salted your potato salad. Good job. <laughs> no paprika? <laughs> no paprika? <laughs> just salt and pepper? <laughs> That's disgusting. Okay. Yeah. Just <clears throat> mayo and salt. Salt. I know. <laughs> oh my God, dude. <laughs> Yeah, there have been a lot of. That's the one thing I appreciated about growing up outside of Utah is that I had a lot of ethnicities that I was able to try food from. When mm. I came to Utah, I was like, "What the fuck are people making?" Do you know Utah is actually one of the bottom half in uh, of diversity. Yeah, states. Well, of yeah. course, yeah. because yeah. we're in such a bubble in Salt Lake. When you go anywhere too, else, crazy. When you go anywhere else, it's yeah. Yeah, it's I was reading case. that on the on the SL Tribune. Yeah, that we were a growing state, and we were in the bottom half of uh, diversification. I guess because the people that are diversifying here, the people moving from California, Texas, and all those places, are the same people that already live here. Yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I like to say I grew up with colored people. Yeah, yeah, did, obviously, yeah. 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 yeah we definitely you have to did. find them. <laughs> <laughs> and we were there. How hard are you looking? <laughs> you either go. They're not. <laughs> you either go west or you go north. Right you when know? you hit the point of the mountain, you're not finding any. How was it in Logan? Let's be real. Yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. You know what I'm right, right. In the city, like, you know, Utah County, maybe Salt Lake County, you're good. But like yeah. anything outside of that. Yeah. Actually, you know what's crazy? You know the the sticky the sticky rice um like patty that your parents would make you like dipped in egg. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you know what I'm talking about? I would eat that at like field trip lunches. And my my homie's mom, she was like the lady that was like, uh, what is the word? Chauffeur. Chaperone. 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 Yeah, chaperone. She was like, What is that? Like looking at it like it was the crazy. I was like, Oh, it's just a rice patty. And she was like, oh, my God. <laughs> that is I- the coolest thing I've ever seen. Oh. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, and I was a kid and I was like, yeah, this is just sticky rice and egg, honestly. But yeah, it, it, it's true. Utah was not very influenced. I was actually only the, the only Asian kid in my grade. So this is a lot. Mean, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. You was, too. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually one other Asian kid. In Logan at the time. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> bro. So I asked him. I said, "So how was it for you, Logan?" 
Yeah. That was my guy. He said that was like <laughs> that was my guy growing like, up. I still know him now. <laughs> it's it was from weird. across the room, blood brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Forever. Yeah. I was in Kearns too, which you would expect a little well, we did have other colored kids, but I was the only Asian kid in my grade. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. Kearns? Yeah, Bacchus Elementary. I don't know about that. It's right one. it's right by uh Thomas <laughs> Jefferson. Okay. Well, there was like Asian kids in the community, but in my grade, I was the only one. Like your whole weird. grade? I've what, never what had grade? the old grade. That's well, crazy. What um, grade let's say in? like before, Come like on, buddy. before like a first to fifth grade, I was like the only Asian kid huh. so in my grade. Yeah. Something's not adding up over here. There was other Asian kids in the school. Like Kenny, what's his name? Kenny, what's his last name? He's spiky hair. Always did windmills. Like really good. You know what I'm talking about? Kenny Vo. Just kidding. I don't know. No, Kenny. He was in fundamentals. Kenny Ho. A basketball? Kenny Ho. A basketball? He, yeah, Kenny Ho went to my elementary school too. Fundamentals of basketball? Yeah. Well, no, that was the B Boy group before, oh. well, sometime oh. all them before back in the day. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I was like totally lost. Yeah. Kenny Ho. But, no, yeah, I was like the only kid in my grade, though. Only oh, Asian kid in my okay. grade. I had a couple of Asians. It's just a battlefield when you have other Asians in the classroom. Oh. I don't know. You just like the other white kids put a pin to you against each other. Fuck no. Yeah, what happened? You were soft. I didn't. That didn't, <laughs> didn't happen to me. Oh, okay. Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. The hell? Now, you actually really think I'm like super crazy soft. <laughs> Remind you, I kicked a kid in the nuts twice. <laughs> at the age of five. Okay. At, no, at, not at the age of five. I was eight years old. Oh, see, and at the age of seven years old, I also you. kicked a girl in the face. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> that should be something you're bragging about. Okay? I, I am bragging about it because she called me Chinese boy oh, okay. for a, like weeks straight. Mm. And I had enough and I was like, ah! And then I kicked her. Chinese boy. <laughs> and then hey, you, know, you weren't beating the accusations after kicking her. Uh, I was because uh, the principal was also a colored man. So he's like, yeah, she can't be doing that. Hey, that's how I got saved in middle school. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, push the kid in his locker. I'm sorry. I, we, I don't no, know. I, how threw, we got a, on I threw a basketball at kid's face because he said, how can you even see the hoop? Mm. He did the Ooh. That's what he grabbed the ball. Yeah. <laughs> that shit was funny. I was soft. Like, I was emotional, but. He said I was emotional. You know, it's like, you know, I can be emotional. You don't even know what emotions are. <laughs> <laughs> that's stupid. <laughs> Am I lying? <laughs> Let's get into that part of the episode where these two uh, are airing out. I there. no, 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 not t- not today. Not I don't have the energy for it. Today. I mean, um, if someone was getting into the culinary arts, what was what is one takeaway that you've taken that you can kind of give advice to that person? You know, just be open ears. You know, take what you can from like the people that have been in the industry or like a long time. Like being an instructor at twenty three, teaching people who are older than me, you know, Mm. like before that, like I was really scared to even like get into it. And like, I wouldn't people, I thought people weren't going to see, like see me and like respect me just because of my age. But like once I really got into it and like showed them like my way of doing it, like my flavor pairings and like what I Mm. actually know, then like, then I got the respect, you know, but like if you come into like, industry thinking you're the best you're not gonna learn shit and then you're just gonna die out yeah Oof. No. a lot of people come in you said that huh a lot of people yeah. come and think they're the shit yeah. I, I I've, like honestly, I've honestly known somebody else like that and it was really hard for him to keep working right for, really for i know attitude problem yeah an attitude problem for honestly. sure yeah. for sure yeah yeah r.i.p not to him, but <laughs> <laughs> he's a really talented cook. But it was the ego, for but sure. he because he got out of school and he oh, thought you know he was a is? shit. Oh yeah, uh, oh yeah. yeah, he's yeah, my yeah. biggest fan. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Give him way you too know much that. Time. You know he's my he, biggest fan. He loves you. <laughs> shit. Who the fuck? Okay. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. <laughs> We're not gonna. I'm around. watching you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to. For some this reason, one. everyone in Moose's family, except for Jesse, loves me. Like, they've always like. Well, because. Here's the thing. My oh, we're brother, cousins, though. Uh, yeah, he's a cousin. But but here's the thing. My brother, apparently, he's told me this. He's like, every time that I try to say hi to Tay, he acts like he's too cool. That's a goddamn lie. I don't know. That's what he said. It's a goddamn lie. I say hi to everyone. What's up, know. Jesse? What's up, Jesse? <laughs> Just because he doesn't see me waving across the room. But actually, no. And trust, like, he's very different now, especially oh, being yeah, yeah, out. Yeah. And, like, he, I'm sure you guys would just start making out the second you guys Whoa. see him. Yeah. We're cousins. Hell yeah. <laughs> we're cousins. Stop. <laughs> Hell yeah. <sighs> No, it's funny. he's just very sweet now. He's very so, sweet. So well, ever since I discovered that we're cousins, point zero zero six, right? We're point six zero cousins. Zero six, baby. Yeah, we're on the we're on the we're on tips. there. And then um So, so like great, 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 great uncle, something. auntie, 
It's like something happened. My my great 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 uncle like kissed his great 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 great, great auntie. Yeah, yeah, somewhere like that. So his cousins <laughs> touching tips. His cousins dating my cousin, but they're both my cousins now. So they're like this a little too close to home. I already this is told, a little weird. I already yeah. told them. I was like, that's what happens when you get with a loud girl. What are you yeah. doing? Happens, dude. Yeah, thank God I never did. Uh, uh I tried one time. Mm. Didn't work out. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think shout you, out yeah. her. <laughs> I'd probably get fried. Would you ever um, You're too good. Just take on opportunities outside the country? Like if, would, if someone offered you to go cook in like a Michelin star restaurant in Japan, is that something that you would want to do? Not more, more so for yourself for the, like the learning aspect of it. Be crazy. It's hard for me to even say, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. cause just, I would love to learn, but it's the thing about being in a Michelin star kitchen because you have to start from the bottom again yeah no matter how much experience you have if you go into a michelin star kitchen you're starting at the bottom no matter what right but like just the things you can learn from that kind of like atmosphere is crazy but no (laughs) (laughs) like i can't i can't i just could never do it like i'd rather just learn on my like learn on my own Mm -hmm. especially if you have your own piece right Right. too yeah that's the biggest thing for you is that you're you're now in a place where you are not trying to sacrifice your own peace because you know where you're at with yourself mm-hmm. versus where you would end up in a place where things are maybe a little more aggressive. Things yeah. are not going the way you want it to because it's not for you. It's for the people around. Yeah, for sure. Like, I couldn't ever, like, like if I started off, Back where I was at, like in a restaurant, I would never have saw myself being a private chef mm-hmm. at that mm. point. I thought I like thought about quitting so many times. I thought about going back to college to get my like medical degree, like my master's or whatever, all that kind of shit. But you know, it just all panned out. It worked out like how I wanted it to, and yeah, I just do all do my own thing. At such an early age, too, man. That's like right. it's props to you for doing that. Yeah, no, and honestly, I, so like that, that's my biggest takeaway from this episode is that, you know, you sacrifice a lot for things that you want to do in life, but then you cannot sacrifice enough to have your own peace, right? right? Mm-hmm. And that's my biggest takeaway of sitting with you here and doing this episode with you because you seem to be at peace with yourself in a way where, you know, life can come at you fast, but you control how life is yeah. for yourself at the moment. Mm-hmm. Like getting even some clients recently like the two families i'm taking care of it was crazy because i was like already struggling like i was trying to find like these events to do here and there like Mm -hmm. just like cater for someone like cater for a realtor or whatever do their open house anything you know and then all of a sudden i just get hit up on like instagram randomly they're like yo come cook for us and that's cool yeah, yeah like i was like thinking about it you know i was like okay yeah i got this in the bag you know but it's still in the back of my head i'm like you know so what if they don't like my food kind of thing you know like you can't just judge yourself based on like yeah i'm really good but Mm -hmm. you have to meet people's standards Mm -hmm. yeah so everybody's standards are different right very different especially when it comes to food absolutely yeah oh yeah when it comes to food it's there are so many like you can make the most amazing dish in the world but to that one person that yeah. tries it, and they're like, eh, I, yeah. they're like I hate capers. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? I don't know. My mind just thought the first thing people don't like. Capers? Capers, capers yeah. People hate cilantro. So Cil- You hate you cilantro? cilantro? No. Oh. That's like the, where mine go. My oh, mind yeah, goes yeah, to yeah, cilantro. Yeah. Cilantro, capers. People don't like cilantro? Because it tastes like uh, dish soap. Like- yeah. It's like a genetic thing. There's a genetic <laughs> thing where people that. think it tastes like this. Like Amy doesn't like. Uh, I really can't really tell. I can't either. Yeah. I like it. I like cilantro. I like my yeah. veggies, though. I like parsley, cilantro. I'll, yeah. I'll, eat, I'll eat pretty much whatever as long as it's not shellfish. Dude, the only thing I don't like is whipped cream. Really? I fucking hate whipped cream. I don't really like, like whipped canned whipped cream. Whip cream? Yeah, canned whipped cream. I guess, like, if it's a nice, nice whipped cream, I'll <coughs> yeah. give it a chance, but it's like one bite. That's but so it, funny. That's a weird, like, take. I've never even <laughs> I know, thought about just liking the, whipped cream. Yeah. Dude, when people spray whipped cream in their mouths, it, <laughs> gets, it makes me livid, dude. The cheese whiz. I'm like, oh my god, that's disgusting. How yeah. they put a discretion Cardi, right there. Cardi B or Nicki Minaj came out with like a uh, whipped cream alcohol thing. 
Ooh, I said whipped cream alcohol is actually nice. I, I, said, wild. I said it's wild. Oh, because they <laughs> I remember when um it's dangerous. No Diddy, but when Ciroc did it, they because see when he did it, when <laughs> Sky did it, it was like people were buying that shit up it throughout was crazy. the summer. Yeah, 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 like, that's right. fucking disgusting. I forgot he's sponsored by <laughs> Yeah. Ciroc. People love it. Even I saw like the most manliest man at the liquor store. And then the manliest man. He was like full tattooed. Man, he was he was no hair, just like deep buff, voice, deep voice. And he's like, yeah. this shit's fucking. Amazing. Sounds like Mike Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> he look like a biker, you know. He's like, this uh, shit's amazing. I was like, damn, if he likes it, more power to you. You're judging him. No, I wasn't judging. I'm respecting. You're like judging him. him based off the way he looks. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are stupid. <laughs> It was nothing but respect. God damn it. Yeah, okay. Stop yeah, talking to me. Yeah. <laughs> we're just asking, man. Just you guys asking. are gaslighters. Okay? How? You know how? You guys are talking. You guys are talking. How? How I'm sick of this treatment. Are we okay? gaslighters? I, I am. Yeah, you are. I he knows ask, exactly I'm what he's doing. I'm just asking questions. I am. I'm, I'll be honest. You I'm not. Are, I'm asking questions. There's As a little so kid, I was a pressure. little manipulator, so it kind of so grew into being see, a gaslighter. He says it, and then he just lets it roll. <laughs> and then you say something, and then I'm like, okay, guys. And then you guys are like, wow, we didn't even say anything. <laughs> we didn't even say anything, dude. You were tripping. Stop being so soft. <laughs> I was born this way. <laughs> God damn it. Stay hard. Stay, oh. stay hard. Stay sensitive. <laughs> damn, where's Amy? This girl fell asleep, dude. Uh, she did. Well, I think it's that time. Yeah, you yeah, guys. Can I, can, I can call it. So um, <laughs> <laughs> I can call it. Boost, chill out. All right. You chill out over there, man. I'm chilling. All right, bet. Fucking bitch. <laughs> see? Oh, see? We got. A chef special, well, a segment called Chef Special. Sorry, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> um, which is just a free advice, a free game that you give to people or our viewers on something that you took or take in life that you practice. You know, just free game. Tony Chef Special. Let's see, I would definitely recommend trying every single food at least once. Yeah, absolutely. You know, totally. Like, just eat it. It's not gonna fucking kill you. Yes. Like. People are scared of snails. They're scared of like oh, eating eel, like fire. durian, whatever, yeah, you fire. know, yeah. balut. Oh, balut is fire. so good. Yeah. Honestly. Like, come on, just eat it. It's not going to do anything. And like, that's where I feel like I've learned a lot because I went to Vietnam. I ate some crazy shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, I didn't get as crazy as eating dog. <laughs> like, they do that. I'm not going to lie. No, I know it. they I do. About it, yeah. yeah. That's crazy. I didn't get that crazy. Like, yeah. I ate some coffee rubbed horse. I ate like I'll eat coffee horse. rubbed horse. Coffee rubbed horse. I'll horse eat a Japan. horse. What the fuck is horse that? Horse sashimi. Yeah. What is that? What? Real. Yeah, they got like raw horse. Yeah, raw stuff. horse. Pretty what crazy. You can get it's a very specific too. part. It's right. a very yeah. specific part. Yeah. Like you I can ate. get it in Tokyo. I, w- I want to <clears> get it next time we go. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I tried it in Tokyo. Oh, you tried it in mm-hmm. Tokyo? It's good. Tastes like meat. All right. That's just when people are like talking about it, it's like when people say it tastes like chicken. It's not too far off. <laughs> it's not too far off. Horse taste. We're talking about okay. horse. No, yeah, but I'm saying like people yeah, are yeah, weird yeah. to eat like exotic meats, right? right? Mm-hmm. So like when people eat it, they're like describing. They're like, tastes like chicken. Tastes when like you chicken. Just, what does chicken taste like? Just meat. Meat, right? Yeah. And so that's why the people compare it to that. Horse sashimi, though, I really want it. I don't. Yeah, I don't think I could eat that. If I'm being honest, really? Like, I'm always down. Like, I'm down to eat like tartar, carpaccio, mm. sand, like sushi, that kind of stuff. But like raw once you get meat? into like the game meat uh, and it like being raw, I don't know if I there's, can do it. You there's know? like a diagram that shows where it's cut, but it's a very specific part. It's not like like the usual meaty meaty parts. It's mm. almost like a tendon, almost. Okay. Yeah, and that's yeah, yeah. that's chill. Then it's a little bit. Yeah, it's a little. Cra- I would still eat it. It's a little right. more on the beef gear side, the way the texture is. So mm-hmm. have y'all yeah. had like quail balut? Yeah. That's just I don't fire. know. I actually I don't like balut. balut. Okay. I really don't. I like balut. Like I've if eaten it. Has it jail, then there have been some times where the feathers in there. I'm like. Jesus Christ. I eat that baby, dude. Yeah, yeah I don't eat it. I can't look at chicken. it in the eyes. I don't eat the baby chicken. I eat everything it, around it. Dude, the baby oh. chicken is actually the most fire part. I can't. It's sad, but it can't is stomach. True. I can't stomach myself to do it. I'd be <laughs> eating. I've been eating the big ones. I don't know. Yeah. What do you mean? Like man? a chicken. Like you eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let him gaslight you. Dude. <laughs> Just whoa, keep going. Whoa, we didn't even say anything, bro. We like. I'm like, dude, you can eat ass, but you can't eat a baby chicken. So Tony's chef special <laughs> is to try all your food. You know, open yourself up to new experiences. <laughs> Enjoy your food, whether it's you know the big ones. <laughs> hey, shut your mouth, man. The small ones. It's, you know, it's a, I don't know what you got. It's a pretty baby chicken. No, that's a baby I, duck. I, okay, yeah. I don't know. I just said. 
Shut up, dude. What, what are you talking? I'm not even talking to you no more. Damn. I would ask you what your actual chef special is, but I'm my takeaway is the risotto. That's yeah. Is that your I would say risotto? I'm like I'm really trying to push for Vietnamese cuisine here in Utah as much as I can for like not only myself, but to represent <clears throat> my culture, right? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Like I feel like there's places that do it. Obviously, mm-hmm. you know, they that do are it, just doing it that are doing it to get the white like audience mm-hmm. to come eat it, you know, they pay. Right. So. <laughs> but it's not going to be what it should taste like and yeah. all that kind of stuff. So yeah. I'm really trying to push for that. I like I start off simple with like the banseo, the pho, whatever. Then we can get more crazy. Mm-hmm. But it's just building trust at Proper. that point, you know. Yeah. You have to build trust. Like, I can get really crazy with, like, the shrimp paste and all that kind of stuff. Ooh. He wants proper uh, representation. Yeah. Of his well, as as you food. should. That's yeah. why I get mad when people call it crack sauce and lard. Crack sauce. And, you know, I, crack sauce, crack sauce. It's because culturally, <laughs> like, when you're coming from this, it's our, the way our perspective is, is that this is such a family-oriented thing. You know, our, our cuisine is what brought us up to be the people we are. You know, we yeah. can't go a day without thinking about someone's cooking from our family or, like, when you go to a funeral, it's that's the one thing you're thinking about. Mm-hmm. It's the, all the food that gets put in place together or like even weddings, right? It's how things are put together. Food brings everything together. At the end yeah. of the day, people want to be there. But if you can, if you have food, that's just a little extra on top. Mm-hmm. And that yeah. ultimately how I look at life. And last note for me is like for our culture's food, it's not luxurious. It's like it never starts that way, right? So we kind of, it came from like, our mom and dads that didn't really have like crazy amount of money, but they're still able to scrap and make all like <coughs> the same meals to the same quality delicious. that we know. Yes, delicious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's, it, it makes sense why people feel very, very, very like, uh, what's the word? Have a lot of ownership towards it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. In 10 years, I want to sit down for someone that runs a restaurant, maybe sit down with you. Let's try to make a goal to make like a Michelin star, one star, loud food. Like how that, like. Like like the, how that street hawker in like in in uh, Singapore, mm. he got the he That's got a true, one yeah. yeah you know yeah. if he can do it making the one dish that he loves, it'd be cool to like to maybe accomplish something like that for a lot of people. Okay. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. I don't know if I can do it, but you got it, buddy. You oh, got wait, it. Let me ask you guys this real quick. Yeah. How do you feel about bedek? I love it. Yeah, I, I love it. bedek. Yeah. Love okay. it. Yeah. It just it's just crazy. fucking fish sauce, just 10 times fish okay. sauce. Okay. Fermented, like, the it full. has to be at a certain amount. Well, okay, and yeah. that, and only, okay, honestly, you cannot just get a store bought by Dick. Yeah, you, can. you cannot. Yeah. You have you to make it. Our, I don't have to make it. Our grandma has yeah, it my mom 10 years has ago. Yeah, my mom has my, that shit. Dude. My grandma probably it. still has the same fucking soy sauce gallon that she had for fucking 20 years ago when she came to America or something. You get like that plastic bin that's wrapped in a Dude, plastic yeah. bag in the dark corner of the garage and you pull that bitch out. It's like wine. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's loud, like loud wine. That's just wild. <laughs> yeah, honestly, and it's funny because I I taught her one of the first dishes I taught her how to make was um just some tama thing, just some cucumber salad, right? And she was like, "Do you need this?" And when she started making it, because she didn't like the way it smelled. Right. No one, it's everyone turns really away from it. that, yeah, right? Really yeah. But when she started making, she's like, "Okay, I get why you need to have this in in these type of dishes." And now right. you watch her in the kitchen. She's like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah." <laughs> <laughs> She told me 11 years ago that she would make me fried rice, and I've never had it. She has yet, <laughs> she has yet to make that shit. Yeah. But I taught her how to make that thing that but she, she has to call made every weekend. She, she, does. Does. You know, she, she does. does. Yeah, straight up. See, you teach but her no how fried to fish, rice. she eats for life. You, you, you give them food. I need ham fried rice. Ham fried rice. She's like, I don't want that side to come out of me. She just turns into, she has a cigarette in her mouth. <laughs> Big ass <laughs> you know, walk. Big ass walk. <laughs> it's the um, yeah, it's that yeah. South Park episode where the, the Jer- Jersey Shore, where they're turning into the Snookies, yeah. yeah. but she turns into old Chinese just grandma, old Chinese just man. whipping it up. I was like, damn, I didn't even know to turn on a stove. <laughs> it's like, that's why I can't come out yet. Okay, it makes sense. You got to wait until you're a little older. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just so you guys know, for, for context, Amy and I were, I told her that I like to cook back in the day. And then she's like, yeah, I can make fried rice. And I was like, cool. And this is something she tells all her friends, I guess. <laughs> and so all of us and her best friends have yet to try her, have fried, yet rice. To try her fried rice. You're such a liar. dude. <laughs> and that's one of like, the most simplest dishes to make. To it really is. Whoa, well, yeah. Don't do it when I'm not here. <laughs> that is also true. I, and also because I don't like people in the kitchen while I'm cooking. So I don't think I can ever open a restaurant where I'm around other people. <clears throat> that's why I'd have to do it by myself. That's why it's 10 seats. That's almost like. Mm, omakase style you know, yeah. you know yeah. I don't have to worry about anything like I hate when people are here when I'm when people are partying and I'm like in the kitchen cooking 
Hmm. But I'm actually zoned out for a lot of the time, too. Yeah. I'm just hungry, guys. I've been hungry. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. Well, thank you, Tony. <laughs> chef. I'm actually going to say chef. 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 Thank you, chef. For, thank you, chef. for joining us here on the podcast. It was great to hear your story and open up. It was amazing. And open up the floor to what you do, because this is something that we didn't really have much knowledge, except for what we see on YouTube yep. and stuff. Right. But and it was cool here, yeah. to sit with you and actually be make the topic more personable. Yeah. And letting us talk to you for two and a half Two and a half hours. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. talking just, your ear out. Yeah. I know he's just sitting here. He's like... Come on, guys! I gotta go home. And make risotto. <laughs> I have something. I have something. Sitting. Have, I used to have a risotto to make. Fan. <laughs> Fuck. Um, oh, Nine p.m. Fuck no. If you have any shout outs to anyone, this is we. This is where we usually open floor, the shout floor, out floor. floor. Nah, I'm good. Oh, Shit, I'm okay. good. good. I'm um, him. <laughs> he's like I'm him. I'm it's like sure. staff one. <laughs> That's right. Um, thank you guys for tuning in episode 113 off the menu podcast. Make sure you guys follow Tony in the description below. Comment, um, like, and subscribe, please. Please, please. We, we're almost there. We're almost to a goal, please. another milestone, and we reached seventy-eight or eighty thousand views on our YouTube. Eighty thousand. Eighty thousand views. <clears throat> I, I check our social blade every Wait, once 80, in a while. Eighty thousand or eighty thousand. Eighty thousand. Oh wow! So Total. a lot of our viewers are not subscribers. Mm-hmm. So and it's oh. pretty crazy. So I check our social blade once a week, which is where you check to see how much money you would potentially make. We went from making thirty cents an entire year yeah. to now we can make three hundred twenty-two dollars once we get monetized. Three hundred twenty-two. We almost in the big bucks. Almost Three enough to, <laughs> almost enough to pay foodie fam. That's to come. A- <laughs> <laughs> but that is episode one through thirteen off the menu podcast. Peace out, y'all. <laughs> Damn, <laughs>